Hey guys, Dark Humility here. You can always catch me at www.twitch.tv backslash Dark Humility, usually for Diablo 2 content, six to seven days a week. Today, we have a special treat for you guys. We have a full, comprehensive Lightning Fury Javazon guide. We'll be going over five different setups. I'll be going over all of her strongest areas overall um, in the setups that make the most sense to uh, with the setups that make the most sense to play her in those areas. I'm going to be going over her standard setup, which is kind of the jack of all trades, but also specializes in the cow level. We'll be going over then the starter, the 99 FCR uh, build, the boss killing build, and the hardcore variation of the Javazon in the late game. This is mostly a late game guide, however the starter variant will go over kind of the gear you at least want at a minimum to start farming Nightmare Cows and to start pushing Hell in general. And we'll talk about of course how all that fits together. Um, before we start farming the areas, we'll of course demo her in the areas and explain some mechanics while we do it. And uh, before each of those uh, demos of course we'll be going over kind of the gear changes or at least the stats, skills, and the gear. And just kind of talk about why we're doing what we're doing. Um, to start, of course, we're going to go over the standard variant, which is the one we currently have in front of us, and we'll go over um, all of the different gear configurations, whatnot. Second, but I'm going to, of course, first talk about kind of what kind of stats we're looking for on the Javazon. So, on a standard Javazon, um, we are going to want 100. We want an, the amount of strength that is required to wear all of our gear. That's all we want. And by the way, one thing I should mention before I, of course, I go any farther, that this uh, all of this information can be used for LOD gameplay on single player, Luggy, LOD Battle.net, and D2R. Uh, one of the reasons we're making this guide is because D2R is coming out soon, so I hope everyone can be prepared with this insanely crazy build. This is an S tier build. This build, um, in general, is stronger than most of the other LOD builds in the late game, and she is the strongest Amazon build, period. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so you just want enough strength to wear your gear. Dexterity. Um, just want enough dexterity to wear your gear as well. Uh, don't pay ex uh, too much attention to the exact numbers here. I had to put enough in to wear all of the uh, variants we're going to show off after we're done with the standard Javazon variant here. Um, so uh, it's just enough dexterity to wear your gear and enough strength to wear all of your gear, including your uh, Phoenix Monarch on the swap. And then we have, of course, the rest of the points and the vitality. It's pretty simple. Um, resistances, um, since this is not the hardcore variant, I wouldn't worry too much about resistances on this type of a character too much. But getting max lightning res is very helpful, especially since farming Bale is a common activity. And uh, just having a decent amount of lightning and cold res. Fire res is not quite as important as those two res, but um, we will be taking some damage from fire if we don't have a bit more fire resistance on her. You can always, of course, swap out skillers for charms if you want to improve your resistances. No problem. And of course, we have a decent amount of MF. One thing to note is that we're hitting the 68 FCR faster cast rate, which is uh, pretty standard for a Javazon. 52 attack speed as well, which is also very standard. And uh, we also will be having a 100% pierce with our skills in this item, Razor Tail. And we have a lot of fast run lock. There's no like breakpoint or anything we're just trying to hit here, but fast run lock does help quite a bit. The Javazon in general. Um, but yeah, he is a beast for sure. Um, one thing to mention is that we are showing off all these demos on my pluggy and my single player pluggy so this is all solo self found gear which means that the gear that you see here can be improved um, it's not perfect gear necessarily um, but the idea of course is to make the gear as strong as possible in a sense and I'll kind of explain what you're going for uh, when I go over my own gear here um, but before we do that we're going to go over the skills so the kill skill tree uh, it's pretty simple in general. Um, for the standard variant of the Javazon, normally you just have to only put one point to pierce. I put more than that because I'm also going to be showing off the other variants, but normally you just want to put one point all the way down into pierce, and then with pierce plus razor tail, you have 100% pierce chance. 
Uh, yes, indeed. We also will have, of course, all of the synergies maxed out for a Lightning Fury and for Charge Strike. So that means, in general, once you get to a high enough level, you're going to have all five of these maxed out. It's a 100-point build for synergies and damage. Your two main abilities are Lightning Fury and Charge Strike. And your secondary ability is Jab. When an enemy is Lightning Immune, this can definitely help out quite a bit, or even just super Lightning Resistant, even with Infinity on our Mercenary. So, now that that's kind of all of the way for the most part, uh, at least for the standard variant build, we'll go over her gear real quick and kind of explain what we're looking for. So the end game in Infinity is definitely best in slot. That is going to reduce monster resistances to our lightning damage by 85. And it can also break immunities, which allows us to actually do damage to them with our lightning damage. Um, lightning is the easiest immunity to break in the game, which means um, lightning characters benefit from conviction on the mercenary and from infinity. Uh, even more so than a lot of character types indeed um and then of course if we have Endaril's visage here which is pretty much best in the slot when you're using an infinity and fortitude which is best in the slot when you're using infinity the more defense the better and in this case uh, attack speed jewel would be even better maybe to hit another attack speed breakpoint and maybe to use a fresher if you wanted more attack speed I chose a weapon with a very high minimum and maximum damage, though. Great pull axe, so it's very nice. Um, one thing to note is that it's kind of a choice what kind of mercenary you use on the Jabazon. Uh, I'd say either this variant here. Hey! Inferno! Let's go! Ten months as a member of Xana's attack squad, the Ghost of the Machine, the Hurricane Disciples. Chat, let's spam some Eyes of Xana in the chat for Inferno. Give him that Xana salute. Thank you so much, man. Um, one thing to note here is it's kind of a choice whether to use the Holy Freeze or the Might Mercenary. Might Mercenary can definitely help against those Lightning Immunes. Um, it's what I think I'd recommend overall. I'm actually going to be using the Holy Freeze Mercenary just to show you how it kind of works with the slow and whatnot, though. Um, but Might Mercenary is definitely really nice uh, when you're up against Lightning Immunes. Um, it's 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 it's. It's kind of a debate though. Um, it does increase your DPS sometimes to not be under constant assault by monsters. So the Holy Freeze does help in some cases, but the Might will definitely help in others. Um, let's go. Hey, Mr. Dubs, we're doing a Javazon guide at the moment. So we are looking over her gear and we're about to do a demo with the standard version of the character and some of her strongest farms. Then we'll go over her variations in a moment. We can talk more about this character in general. Uh, yes, it's um, Act 2 Defensive Nightmare for Holy Freeze and Act 2 Offensive Nightmare for Might. So that's how that works on the mystery. All right, so weapon, um, Ethereal Upped Titans. So this, was, this is definitely best in slot no matter what for PvE. Uh, in most cases, uh, on the standard version, you should just always have the Titans. This is the Jack of All Trades weapon. It has the most quantity, it self replenishes, and uh, which means, of course, you're not going to run out when you're firing it very quickly. And it has all the stats you could possibly want on this character. Uh, non ethereal ones are not actually much worse than F Titans, so don't feel like you have to have an F Titans. Um, at Titans definitely helps out the leeching a bit and a little bit on the physical damage, especially on Jab. But for the most part, it's not a huge deal. Uh, most of your damage is lightning damage, so a non-F or an even non-upgraded Titans is perfectly fine on this. Enigma is just awesome for mobility on most characters in the endgame. Uh, even if you're a sorceress in some cases, it's just the uh, strongest armor in LOD. And it will be so on D2R, at least when it comes out. One thing to note is that this armor just gives you everything. Is you teleport for mobility, uh, which require, which means you're going to need FCR on your gear in order to teleport faster. And it gives you pretty much everything you're going to want. Damage reduction, life, uh, skills, MF. It's just everything. 
Enigma is just perfect. And Griffin's Eye gives you some of the FCR we were talking about, but you mainly use it for those crazy lightning stats, the lightning damage and the enemy lightning res on it. We are using an attack speed jewel in here. We're going to want to hit that 55 attack speed frame like we showed in her stats, or the 52 frame, I should say. At 52 lightning furies at frame 9. So we're definitely going to want that, and we're going to use that to the best of our ability. So we're going to want the attack speed jewel, and in this case it's an attack speed res jewel, which for the most part that's pretty much what you're going for, is some kind of attack speed res jewel, and some kind of a griffin's better stats. The better, of course. Uh, one thing to note about the enigma is the base mostly matters for looks, but, you know, dash has got a nice combination of defense and uh, lower strength requirement, so it's actually kind of nice to use. You don't want it to be too high strength requirement, otherwise... It's not going to balance out well with your spirit strength requirement, so I'd recommend probably sticking to like something like Mage Plate or Death Shroud in that slot. High Lord's more attack speed and his skill, and Riz. That's more damage, attack speed, and Riz. So we're, we're now at 35 attack speed, so we're going to need one more item with attack speed. But this, of course, is huge for our faster cast rate and skills, and our mana, and our Riz. I hope you're doing well, man. I hope you're doing well, sir. We're doing a Javazon guide today. Pretty sick. Yeah. So yeah, we have all the stats on here that we need as well. Um, since we are teleporting, it definitely is going to consume a lot of mana. It gives us a lot of res. But it's mainly for the uh, faster cast rate breakpoint. Also, this shield alone helps us have faster hit recovery at the 52 breakpoint. Uh, so it's very important we use uh, a spear on the standard setup of this build. So we're going to hit more FCR, and once we hit one more FCR item, we're also going to be at 70 faster cast rate for teleporting. On swap, we're going to want a call to arms, which is going to give us a huge mana and life buff when we use it before each run. And Phoenix for swap, so that we can instantly regenerate a whole ton of life and mana from the corpses on the ground after we use our attacks. Um, it's very good when you're teleporting a lot and then attacking a lot and consuming a lot of mana with Lightning Fury to um, be able to use this. Alternatively, though, you can also use a Spirit on Swap if you want more um, life and mana for all the arms. Uh, however, this is a really nice quality of life, so if you can get to the point to get a Phoenix, it's very nice. And here's the rest of our attack speed and some skills. And the more other stats, the better on something like this. But in general, that's kind of what you're looking for. Some kind of 3 javelin 20 gloves or some kind of 220 gloves with other stats. And then, of course, we have a 10 FCR mana leech mana all res MF ring. Um, you don't need something quite this good. This is insane. And yes, I did sell find this. A crazy ass ring right here. Very nice ring indeed. Um, but... In general, you're looking for 10 FCR Mana Leech. You do want a pretty heavy source or sources of Mana Leech on this build um, because it, your Lightning Fury will consume an insane amount of mana. Um, so even with Phoenix and whatnot, unless you want to be swapping or chugging Mana Potions constantly, uh, you definitely want some source of Mana Leech. And this FCR will hit us, get us to that 70 breakpoint as well. The other stats are just icing on the cake for sure. Remember, there's always better versions of these items you can get. Razor Tail helps us get that 100% pierce. That's pretty much the reason you wear it. And Raven Frost. Um, since our attacks are attack speed based, uh, an LOD, only attack speed based attacks are affected by being frozen. We don't want to be frozen. You could solve that, of course, by putting like a cham in your griffins, but then you'll have to find the rest of your attack speed elsewhere. Um, possibly you'd be forced into using like Thunderstrokes or something, which we will go over in one of our variants, but overall that's uh, pretty good stuff in general. Yeah, it's a very sick Raven Frost, very sick stats. Uh, what is the best place to find a four socket and Monarch in LOD? A white Monarch is best to find in Cows, which we're actually just about to do in a second. Bases are very good, so Cows are really good for bases overall. And uh, it's one of the Javazon's strongest farming areas. So it's not going to be a problem to find that one with this character if you have one. And then, of course, we have a 
War Travelers, um, in general, you can use a boots with more res, MF, just kind of stats that kind of help you out with filling out the rest of your build. Uh, magic Find is really important, though, if you're going to be playing the build for um, trying to find loot in general. Uh, however, you know, if you're just base farming or something, you might choose something different in this slot. There's definitely a lot of possibilities here, for sure, like Alder's Boots and just other res MF boots or... Um, even silk weaves if you want mana per kill. Mana per kill is just another thing like mana leech that will help you sustain your mana. There's definitely some real options on that on that particular gear slot. Then of course you just want at in the end game if possible a Hellfire Torch, an Amazon Hellfire Torch, Nihilus Charm, Lightning Skillers. Uh, I don't have the greatest Lightning Skillers on my solo cell found. I definitely have better ones for many other builds, but. Um, you can get these up to 45 life, so don't be shy. Get the best ones you possibly can. Uh, Geed's Fortune. And then you can use like life res charms or magic find res charms, depending on like what you're using the build for. And that is pretty much the standard Javazon loadout. Um, can you do Ubers? Uh, with Jab, it's possible. This is not a great build for killing Ubers, though. We will not even be going over that in the guide today because I don't recommend uh, attempting Ubers with a Jabs on. You can do it if it's a challenge or if you're only playing one character and that's your challenge to do everything with that one character, definitely. Uh, but overall, it's not really the most ideal use of this character. So I hope we, I hope we understand that end of the day so it's, uh, it's perfectly understandable but yes very good stuff overall now one thing you should do on the standard amazon is if you're not putting these extra points in a pierce because you're not supposed to anyway you're just supposed to put one point in here like i said um but of course i'm trying to show off all the builds quickly one thing you want to do is get slow missiles once you're level 97 so that you can also slow down uh, soul missiles uh, so all kinds of missiles elemental missiles and archer missiles that can definitely help out in some situations as well it's not needed though it's kind of just utility all right well without further ado let's do the javazon's literally her best area in the game this is what this build is designed to do um, in high player account, which we are in, so we are in player 7, uh, she destroys cows with no issues whatsoever. Oh wow, my pluggy is uh, generating Diablo. You know what? That's going to be good for the demo, actually. I did not plan on killing D-Clone during this, but we can definitely show that for the boss killing variant. So that could be actually kind of interesting to show off here. Um, anyway, um, we will stay in this game then and just uh, continue to show off the areas, but this is her strongest area. Uh, you can even pop into public games. Uh, sure, I'm assuming on D2R this will be possible as well. Pop into public games and then pop open a cow portal and get full player 7 benefit. So you get the maximum drops possible from the cows. The lowest amount of no drop percentage, which is a chance monsters have of not dropping an item. Um, at higher player counts, at player 7 it maxes out. And you can just put, go, you can enter a public game with... Just a lot of people in it. You could, uh, in single player, set it to player 7. And you can get maximum benefit out of this. This character is designed for this area, so she is arguably the strongest cow farmer in the game. Um, some argument between this and like some corpse explosion variation necromancers, but I would say it's pretty much the case. So before you start a run, just make sure you uh, use battle command and battle orders. Teleport around. And with your right click, have Lightning Fury. And of course, move around. With your left click. Against Lightning Immunes, I can use Jab with my left click. Um, you don't always have to even kill Lightning Immunes. You can totally ignore them if you want. Um, however, that is a choice, depending on if you think you can get better gear just targeting the elites no matter what their immunity is but in that case my conviction couldn't break that lightning immunity but in general this variant is designed for this so since we have 100 percent pierce really high density is totally shredded 
by Lightning Fury in general. You can see that the cows just drop. She is a monster in here. And uh, this is one of the, this is definitely the area she's most known for. We'll be showing off a lot of other farms that are also insanely good on her today, but it's definitely what she's known for. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, corn on a cob. We're gonna get it, man. What's up, Sabaku? Dude, does this app Javazon build do LOD Ubers? Yeah. He won't miss. Not quite, but we're gonna show how she does D clones. So that's why I went back to that question there. Is um even though she's not great at Ubers, she destroys bosses and that includes D clone. Now you can use potions, of course, like I'm using right now. Like let's say you don't have Phoenix. But if you want, you can also just swap to your Phoenix, and you'll notice that my mana will completely fill back up. I don't have a ton of mana leech on my gear. I might even recommend just having more mana leech, or like I said, mana per kill from Silk Weaves. Um, but if you don't have that, it's a perfectly fine solution. The Javazon is crazy. This is player 7 once again, so we're talking like way higher monster HP, more monster damage. It doesn't matter. Um, this build is built for this. The more density, the better. And with her charge strike, she's also the queen of killing bosses. Um, but in general, this is literally what she's built for. Uh, we will, of course, I'll also show off some other areas that she's really good at killing here in a moment. But cow level just gets shredded by this character. Now you'll notice that you run out of javelins. One thing you can do is you can keep a javelin. If you don't want to have all these charms, you can keep some extra titans in your inventory or you can put them in your cube. And you can just have them ready for when you run out of javelins. Um, if you have an F titans, I'd recommend at least having one non-Eth Titan so that you can actually repair one. You can't repair the Eth Titans even though it will self-regenerate. Um, so that's one thing to note. But yeah. In general though, she's a Titan for sure. And she can do it. You can destroy. And you'll notice with Charge Strike too, I can focus down like higher HP monsters or monsters that are more lightning resistant. Um, or just when there's not many monsters. I recommend using Lightning Fury when there's at least three or more enemies, but you can also use Charge Strike around that area. When you have like 20 enemies, it's this is when it's really effective. Um, I'd say somewhere between like 10 and 20. And Charge Strike is really effective when you have fewer in an area. Lightning Fury really thrives on having lots of monsters because it spreads out to all the monsters around it after you hit the initial uh, enemy. So it's really, really cool stuff. So I'm going to go swap out my Titans here. And uh, we can also show her off in some other areas as well here. Um, I think... Hmm... What area should I do? I guess we can do Pit just to show off like a standard area that she's really strong in in general. And then maybe show Worldstone Keep as well. Um, after this, we'll do a brief kind of uh, explanation of some gear swaps, and we'll start showing you some more variations of this character. Um, yeah, in general, it is no problem whatsoever. I think the pit, oh, you know what? We already destroyed the pit. Well, you know what? I did already do that. Oops. Actually, you know what? Let's just stick to something simple on your tier. You know what? Let's kill D-Clone. You know what? I, I think I need to kill D-Clone because I have to swap characters anyway. Alright, so even though we're not in the boss killing variant of this character yet, I'm going to use uh, T-Strokes for more negative enemy lightning res, and I'm going to use thunder, stroke, uh, thunder Gods for his lightning breath. Let's just see how well uh, we perform here uh, under these conditions. 
One thing we can also do is get a lightning faceted griffins instead of a attack speed faceted griffins. And uh, we can still hit that 55 attack speed breakpoint because they're using thunder strokes. Uh, we're going to talk about this variant more though in a second, but because D clones spawn in my game, let's do it. If we can. If we can! Where did he spawn? Oh, you know what? Lulz. I think it disappears after a certain amount of time, doesn't it? You know, I figured this out on my pluggy the other time. He's in Act 1. Is he, though? I don't know. I don't think he is. The Cow King. Did I spawn him in the cow level? I don't think he can spawn in there, can he? Man, I'm actually learning some things right now. Not about the jab zone more specifically, but... Oh. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he is in here. My chat's right! Okay, good. Okay, here we go. So, this is player 7 chat in YouTube. Players 7, Diablo clone. Absolutely wrecked. This character with Charge Strike is the single most powerful boss killing ability in the game. You might notice that with the damage we're doing here. So we got 4k Lightning Fury with this current setup and we even have the negative Lightning Res. We have over a hundred thousand maximum damage with 11 charged bolts and 10k damage. So he just gets destroyed. Uh, I know we have some pretty high minimum damage there, but it's actually ridiculous. Uh, I'll ID the Annihilus, why not? And then we're gonna go move on to um, showing off the standard build again here in a second. And then we'll go show off another variant here as well. Um, that's actually the boss killing variant we just used for that, but we'll talk about why those items work better for boss killing. We'll talk about um, what situations you should use those in. That's one of the situations, but if Diablo clone happens to spawn in your game, or if you just happen to encounter him in some kind of fight, in some kind of situation, in some kind of area, yeah, 1 to 110,000 damage kick, that's right. And 15, 18 Annihilus, well, cool. So uh, that's how you get an Annihilus, you kill Diablo Clone, excellent. Alright, so that was really cool. I forgot that I was in the cow level, and I forgot he could even spawn in the cow level, so that was, uh, that was actually kind of instructive for me, even. Very cool. Alright, so yeah, we're on our single player pluggy, and let's just return to a different game here. Uh, I'll just show the standard build in the pit and in Worldstone Keep, where this build is pretty solid. So yeah, we've got that 68 FCR teleport speed. Oh, you know what? Um, I forgot to swap out one item here. I forgot we still had the lightning faceted griffins instead of the 15 attack speed jeweled griffins because we took off the T-strokes. Yeah, that's not good. So yeah. One thing to note about this character is you don't need Enigma, but as you can see with Enigma, she's very mobile. And um, making this character even a little bit more mobile is definitely worth it. She has the slowest teleport speed in the game. Uh, but it's still way faster than running. Way faster than running. And with all that life per kill on Enigma, you're constantly regenerating your life with very high life leech and life per kill. Uh, so Enigma is amazing. Uh, but you don't necessarily need Enigma. You could also use other armors as well, like Chains of Honor. I don't know how you, I don't really recommend it though. If possible, I'd always go for Enigma every time myself. But you definitely could. Definitely could use those in the end game. 
But as you can see in the pit, she is fast and she just shreds the monsters. We are still in player 7, so getting maximum loot even from the random monsters. One thing you'll notice is that I'm targeting higher density in general. These monsters are lightning immune that can be broken by infinities, so in order to do more damage to them, sometimes I'll whip out charge strike unless there's still a lot of monsters around them. Uh, but when there's only a couple of them remaining, I'll definitely whip out that uh, um, definitely whip out that charge strike. Once again, of course, you can use Phoenix to refill your life and mana if you have it. Beautiful stuff. So yeah, the pit gets cleared instantly. The pit is very good for all kinds of items, so it's a very well-rounded area. You can find every item in the game in the pit as well. This is another area you can find every uh, every item in the game, and it's also one of the Javazon's specialty areas. And here, wow, we got some uh, we got some nasty monsters for sure. I've got souls, but as you can see, we do so much damage with this build. Yeah, see, we're still doing 3,600 with the standard variant of the Javazon, almost 10,000 charge strike. Um, so this very balanced version of the of the Amazon does very well in here as well. Uh, that FHR on the spirit is really nice for us recovering from the snake charges there. Well, stone 2 can be a little bit nastier than most of the other world stones on this character, just simply because there's usually more lightning immunes. But it just means you have to throw out a couple of more charge, um, lightning furies, sorry, not charge strikes. Teleporting near the enemies is important. If we just run at them, you might notice that my Conviction Aura on my Mercenary hasn't applied to the enemies yet. This is why if you can teleport near the enemies, the Conviction Aura will shine underneath the monsters and you'll be able to maximize your damage to the monsters. You're so spoiled and... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can understand being spoiled by mods, man. But I will say, this is uh, this is how it's going to work in D2R, though. Let's get used to it. Let's get used to it. Obviously, you don't have to play D2R, but it's going to be awesome, so... I'll recommend it. So that monster, I pretty much, like... For all intents and purposes, even in Player 7, I can one-shot monsters with charge strike. Uh, this ability is just crazy. The single target damage, the damage to just large swaths of monsters and elite packs is nice. Um, compared to a lot of other classes, she doesn't really thrive at elite pack sniping so much, or elite sniping, but she's very good at killing elite packs and just large groups of monsters. You can really uh, maximize all the items you find from the, item, from the monsters doing so. Uh, that monster has both physical resistance and lightning immunity that can't be broken by an affinity. So right there I made sure to whip out my jab attack, which does a lot of physical damage, especially with my ethereal titans. As these monsters, they have a bit more health, you might want to swap to charge strike here and there against them. Having charge strike on left click teleport and lightning fury on right click tends to be pretty optimal. Because you can just use Charge Strike and Lightning Fury uh, no matter what. You will have to swap between Teleport and Lightning Fury though uh, to make maximum use of those skills. But in general, that's just kind of how it works. So I'm going to go Teleporting and bam. Let's see if I can... Um... Let's see if I can go pop into uh, World Stone 1 real quick, actually. Without the filter. Well, you don't even need too much of a loot filter in LOD as much, um, because it's not like you have, like, things like are pretty common in other mobs, uh, mods, sorry, like mapping. So it's not like you need it, but uh, people do use it sometimes for chest farming. So yeah, if I keep, like, uh, Titans in my cube or something, I can just swap those out. I do have multiple pairs of F Titans I have self found. Yes, it's uh, very convenient, right? Very good stuff. These enemies here are lightning immune. But because we do such an insane amount of damage to this character, 
Even in player 7, lightning immunes and high density will melt. This character is just no kind of joke at all. And... Once again, we got some lightning immunes there. It's a little tougher to kill them, but... For the most part, it's not much of an issue. As long as you can break them with infinity like you can for most lightning immunes... Nothing really survives. Teleport, Lightning Fury. Teleport, 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 teleport. Lightning Fury, Lightning Fury, Lightning Fury. Um, if you can, when you throw out your initial Lightning Fury, try to make sure your point of impact is kind of where the most number of monsters are surrounding that point of impact. So, like, for instance, if I gathered up all the monsters here, if I put... Oops. Okay, that's annoying. Got stuck. Okay. That's why you don't do this. Alright. I'm gonna throw it out towards the middle there, and so that it spreads out all around. It's really good stuff in general. Throw it out towards the middle here, and then it spreads evenly on both sides. And then you can finish off the rest of the monsters with Hard Strike, or just throwing out some more Lightning Furies. In general, though, there's a lot of monsters on the screen. This ability is very strong. It becomes stronger the more monsters there are. Um, it maxes out at 44 volts uh, with our current skill level, which is 43 on my current build here. And uh, it's a maximum number of bolts. So you'll never reach that maximum unless there's essentially 44 more targets on the screen. Um, so that's how many bolts it can release. Which is why it's really important to get density um, as much as possible. Matter of fact, uh, teleporting past like one or two monsters, unless you just want to pop them with charge strike real quick, is really important for maximum use of that ability. Looks like our battle orders ran out. Make sure to refill that as much as possible. And you do stuff. Hey, that's right. LOD content. Sick. That's right. We are doing everything Javazone today. Right now we're making a guide. So we're not going to do Bale with this character because I kind of want to show off the boss killing variant a bit more for that. I did show that off already for D-Clone. You never know when D-Clone's going to spawn in Pluggy, so that was just a good opportunity to show how ridiculous uh, this character is at killing bosses, including one of the more dangerous bosses, Diablo Clone. Uh, for uber ubers are a little bit different though and you know we'll, we'll explain that when we go over the boss killing variant why it's not great for killing ubers ubers uh, work differently than like every other boss type in the game but we'll talk about that in a moment all right so that's pretty much it for the standard javazon uh saw some of her strongest areas we'll go over some of her other very strong areas when we go over some of the variations of gear that you can use on her but Overall, that's pretty much the gear, the builds, the stats, everything else. Uh, she is, once again, an S-tier build. She is uh, stronger than most other builds in LOD, believe it or not, in the endgame, at least for PvE content, uh, just overall. And she's the strongest boss killer except for Ubers, and she is uh, arguably also just top three, maybe even top density clear as well in many ways, uh, so long as the monsters aren't heavily lighting and resistant or anything. So, she has a lot of uh, crazy, crazy abilities in that regard. One thing we're actually going to show, of course, now, is our second variant. So this is now going away kind of from the standard Javazon. Um, this is what you start with. So, you might be wondering, well, Dark Humility, that's a lot of crazy gear. How do I start farming gear if I just want to make a Javazon and start playing her and I don't have any gear? Um, well, you're in luck. This character is also one of the stronger starters uh, in Diablo 2 as well. Um, you can literally just level her up in all kinds of ways in general. Um, you can level her up as, as a uh, elemental boson, and then you can merge into a Javazon. Um, I'm not going to go over really the leveling so much, but I will explain how you can acquire these items as to kind of explain how easy it is uh, to get these kinds of items so don't, you're not intimidated maybe as a 
newer player trying to play a Javazon. So we're gonna pretend on this character. So we're pretending here. We're gonna pretend. Also, I'm gonna put it in. I might actually try like player seven. I don't know. We'll try player seven with it in uh, in nightmare. Actually, I'm gonna want to start in nightmare. Not nightmare. Okay. So we're gonna explain what you can do with this build here. So this is um. Well, first I guess we'll go over like some differences in stats and uh, skills and gear and whatnot. And we'll kind of explain how to acquire this gear. So we're going to first pretend that this is a 75 level character. So I have, I don't have 24 of my skills put in, even though she's 95. I just ignore that. We don't have like a ton of her stats put in there either. Uh, she still has more health, I would say, overall, just simply because she's 95. But I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to that either. And generally, you just still want to put enough strength and dex to wear your gear. Even as a starter build, though, um, because you're starting with Rhyme, you could choose to go max block. So you can choose to put points into dexterity until it says in your tooltip here that your chance to block is 75%. Uh, the more levels you have, the more points into dex it will require to have max block. So every level you will lose some block and you have to put more points in dexterity if you choose to do that. Um, the starter variant of the Javazon does use a shield that is pretty ideal, though, for um, going max block. So you can do that if you want. Vitality, just put the rest of the points into there, and voila. And um, try to get as much res as possible. And once again, we're trying to really hit that 52 attack speed breakpoint, but you might not be able to hit it initially. You might only be able to hit like the 30, 32. Um, so try to go for as much attack speed as you can. Um, the 32 attack speed breakpoint is also pretty nice as well. And just go for as much faster recovery as you can get in your gear and charms. And for the most part, it's all you basically need. Um, one thing to note, the difference between a fully loaded standard Jabazon in the end game is that you have to put a lot of points into Pierce uh, because this is a, uh, we don't have razor tail, so we don't have some of those fancy unique items, and we don't have any pierce on our gear. Uh, we definitely need a lot of pierce though. Pierce is really important for maximizing the damage of Light and Fury. Uh, one thing I didn't exactly mention when I did the standard Javazon is when Light and Fury passes through an enemy, it will check to see, uh, it will check the percent chance and it will roll for a chance to hit another enemy behind it. Uh, so the higher your pierce is, uh, the more the lightning bolts will hit more and more monsters. Sometimes they'll even backtrack and hit monsters that were already hit once by it, um, simply because it has a lot of pierce. So maximizing pierce is very important. Um, so we have high amount of pierce. Um, you can even get more pierce than this if you want. And uh, another major difference is obviously we don't have all of our synergies maxed out, but make sure to prioritize Charge Strike and Lightning Fury and then start uh, leveling up synergies just like on the standard variant of the Javazon. But we're pretending we're level 75, so we're definitely 75 with zero of our skill quests in Hell done. Uh, this is kind of the gear point you kind of want to be at before you start Hell. And before you um, start farming maybe Nightmare Cows and things like that to really get maximum use out of the Lightning Fury Zone. So that's what the starter variant is all about. Um, so the starter variant of the Javazon uh, will not be using an Infinity because it's a very high-end rune word with uh, requires high runes and whatnot. Uh, you can get these runes from Nightmare Countess, you can get them from Normal Cows, and you can get the base um, from... Nightmare Cows, and from all kinds of things, you can uh, get it from a rack in Nightmare Lower Crossed. You can just find it on the ground anywhere from any density or just from moving through Nightmare in general. Uh, you don't necessarily need a scythe, so any four socketed pull arm will do. And like I said, the runes are pretty easy to acquire as well uh, from those areas I mentioned. Uh, one thing that's really nice to find is maybe some kind of helm that either has like Life Leech res um, you can put like towel fool or into a three socketed helm just to give your mercenary a res you can just find a worm skull and undead crown also has life leech so if you happen to get lucky and find one of those crowns that gives life leech it's really nice you can also maybe farm some maybe even like nightmare andy and you can find something like this um, it doesn't have to be a unique though it can like i said be some random three socketed white helm with runes in it 
It could be, um, uh, could be if you get lucky, maybe you find like a rock stopper. You can uh, put some really tanky uh, gear on your mercenary at a lower level. That definitely also helps. Um, another thing that you're going to definitely want on the mercenary if possible, especially when moving into hell mode, is this smoke, Nephilim. Nephilim is pretty easy to get. Uh, Lum is pretty, you, you'll find that usually somewhere in Nightmare or just by queuing up some IO runes, which are the runes below the Lum rune. So three IOs equals a Lum. And Nephilim just gives you 50 all res, which is really important. Resistances are insanely important in Diablo 2, so um, just a, definitely a theme, even as I go over the normal Javazon builds. And for the mercenary to survive, you really want him to have defense if possible. And res. Now, one thing to note is you're not going to be finding a dust shroud usually uh, in nightmares, so you can just use something like a ghost armor or some other uh, exceptional armor like a mage plate. I wouldn't worry too much about the base here. The main point is just getting some defense and a lot of resistance, so your mercenary won't have negative res or very low res in hell. All right. One thing now to mention, of course, here as well, is the gear. The main gear. So, this is the setup that I would try to go for if I could, if possible. There are some other gear pieces here in my stash that I'm going to show off here in a second. So, one thing to... So, we're going to, of course, demo some Nightmare Cows just to show you guys how this build works in Nightmare Cows, which is... You should kind of have this kind of build anyway before you uh, start farming Nightmare Cows anyway. Also sure off in Hell too, so you can see kind of how the build plays and how you can kind of move through Hell a little bit. So, um, there's a lot of options here, but in general, you want to shop a attack speed spear or javelin um, from Anya or Mala in Nightmare um, in Act 5. Uh, they both sell them, just have to refresh their, uh, what they're selling, refresh their stashes over and over, and eventually you'll find one of these. Uh, main goal is still to hit that 52, or at least that 32 attack speed breakpoint. So getting some kind of spear with attack speed is going to really increase your uh, DPS when you don't have crazy items. Uh, lore, uh, this is another item kind of like insight that's pretty easy to get. You can literally shop a two-socketed helm from Charcy and Dorkle even. And then this or the soul you can find from Normal Cows or Nightmare Countess. Nightmare Countess, of course, is always ideal for runes of this quality up through Aya Rune. Normal Countess can only drop up to Rao Rune, so or is even above that, so Nightmare Countess is definitely the target for some of these medium to your uh, runewards. You're definitely going to want to farm that so you can get your lore, your insight. You're going to want to farm the vendor for that one. Um, vendor farming is also important for this item right here. Uh, the higher your character level, the higher level of charges and lower resist you can potentially vendor from Drognan. But what you want to do is you want to go into Nightmare uh, Act 2 at level 36 at possible and farm your first lower resist wand uh, with charges. So... Uh, a charge one with lower resist will give you a lot of uh, negative resist all and will allow you to apply it to monsters which we'll demo here in a second which can uh, eliminate their immunity and make it possible to uh, traverse hell but it's also good just in general for killing bosses because bosses have a lot of resistance so when you start your initial farming on a javazon you're definitely going to want to have one of those handy uh, Ancient's Pledge on Swap, you literally get this from every Barbarian quest, and you can get the shield itself from Normal, Parsi, or Farah, a free socketed large shield. I'd recommend that over a kite shield because it's lower strength requirement. Uh, but that's just there to uh, bolster your res when you're swapping to your lower resist wand. For the most part, your main shield should be Rhyme. Since, once again, we are a attack speed based build, as I mentioned with the standard Javazon, you want cannot be frozen if possible. Being frozen really sucks on a Javazon, because all of your abilities are attack speed based, not cast based. Um, so being frozen will slow down your attack speed. Um, of course, not only is this giving you a very easy to acquire source of cannot be frozen, it's also giving you all resistances. Uh, 
block rate and chance, so if you want to go max block, it's possible, and magic fire. Um, this is a shale F shale you can get from Nightmare Countess as well, and the two socketed bonus shield you can also get from Drognan in normal. Of course, um, now this amulet is kind of a placeholder. In general, you're just looking for an amulet on a early Javazon that gives you res uh, or life, or if you happen to get insanely lucky, both. But um, it's going to be pretty tough to find something that good. Uh, this is just uh, something I have lying around. I can show you that, you know, th these are the stats you're looking for, basically. Maybe not all res, but like res life. Uh, you're not going to have high lords or anything at this point or cat's eye or anything crazy like that. So you're definitely going to want to try to use that if possible. And as for the armor, there are a lot of choices. Um, peace is one of them though, it gives you two skills and it gives you res. Uh, once again, these are all runes you can get from Nightmare Countess and any three socketed armor will work here. So I wouldn't worry about the elite armor, the worm hide. I just have a worm hide available to show. Um, early game, you're going to, of course, want to use stealth, and that's going to help you run faster as well. And treachery is also a very major choice for the armor uh, at this point in the game. Uh, you can hit, you can even hit the 89 attack speed breakpoint uh, if you use treachery plus spear with attack speed and some kind of gloves that gives attack speed as well. Uh, so treachery is also pretty huge, and with fade, you also get damage reduction, um, curse duration reduction, and you get a ton of all res as well when you get faded. So this is a very good armor. Uh, defensive wise, it also gives you faster hit recovery and res. Uh, so even though it says assassin skills, believe it or not, it's actually one of the strongest armors on an early game Javazon. Um, of course, you can also find uh, amulets that give some skills if you don't want to use something like this. So you can put on an Eye of Etlick if you find that. I could also put on like Nogazon Relic. And um all right so next up we probably should talk about the glove options in general the most important stat on the gloves for a javazon is attack speed once again you kind of want to hit that 52 breakpoint we're hitting 60 right now but if i only was lucky enough to find a 31 though we'd be hitting a lower breakpoint uh, but you're at least going to want some source of attack speed somewhere else uh sanders are pretty easy to find like even on a speed run if you've ever seen a diablo 2 speed run these aren't very hard to find. You typically might find them just moving through the game. But even if you don't find something like that, you can shop gloves. You can find gloves like this on the ground. Or um, you can actually do some uh, cow portal farming with the vendor, which you can even do on Battle.net so you don't get timed out even on normal Battle.net. On D2R, you probably don't have to worry about being timed out. But one thing to note is if I'm in Nightmare, I can actually make a cow portal next to Charcy or Geed. And I can um, sit here and kind of just farm gloves for a while. She didn't have any gloves in that iteration. Um, Charcy, ah, she's too close to the portal. All right, anyway, she has gloves there. Um, in Nightmare, they will spawn at a certain character level. I think it's, I don't know, it's like in the 40s or something. But once you get kind of to that point, start spawning attack speed gloves. Um, before you're moving to like Nightmare Cows or Hell, let's just put it that way, uh, you will be able to farm attack speed gloves, um, so long as your character level isn't like super low or anything, uh, which it shouldn't be. If you've already gotten to this point, uh, make a cow portal, you should be at least level 40, and uh, you should be good to go. So you find some attack speed gloves, just anything, you can find attack speed gloves with res, just slap them on and you get more attack speed to reach that attack speed breakpoint. You can also use, of course, the rare ones or just other versions of it in the stash, but in general, that's kind of what you're looking for. Uh, belts, same deal. You can also use this cow portal farming method to farm belts with res and life. Uh, this belt just has res and life just to show you, but you can actually find a blue version that just has res and life or just life, and uh, that will actually help you out a lot. Four slots is definitely preferred, uh, so you have a lot of mana potions and uh, life potions and everything. And then, of course, uh, for boots, same deal. Uh, these boots are pretty absurd, actually. You're probably not going to have boots like this, but I just wanted to show that you can have... Uh, your, your general goal here is to get a faster run walk and to get uh, res. Usually a single res, and once again, you can also farm them from the vendors. So, matter of fact, if I can show... 
Yeah, so this one has faster run walk. Even that's not bad, but um, usually you're looking for something with uh, faster run walk and res. See, this belt just has a lot of life, but in general, you're kind of just trying to tie together those stats as much as possible it's early in the game. And then for rings, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, rings, mana leech is really important, just as it is in the end game. If you can find any kind of mana leech under rings, it's awesome, but if you can't, this resistance is life that definitely helps. Uh, modeled heal, if you happen to get lucky enough to find a modeled heal by this point, which, eh, it's not too unrealistic. You can definitely find this really early in the game, even at normal, and, uh, you find that mana leech. So, these are definitely a very cheap option and very easy to acquire. And then on top of that, of course, uh, these are definitely pretty unrealistic to have charms this good. Uh, but usually you want maybe more of your inventory filled out to this point anyway. And the general idea is just to get life res uh, that you can actually use as life res charms. In general, more life, the more res, the better. And of course, if you're lucky enough to actually have a javelin and spear skiller, uh, more power to you. But at this point, you're probably not actually going to have one of those. And... There we have it. Now this build, once again, is designed for nightmare cow farming and pushing through hell, so now we're just gonna demo kind of what she's built for. Um, Valkyrie helmet, are you talking about um, Valkyrie wing? Valkyrie wing is a good option for sure. Um, I think it's more of a mid-game option, though, for the Javazon. I don't know if we're really going to cover every single item that you can possibly use, but that's definitely one of the items that's actually pretty good inspiration, for sure. One thing to note is that even items as good as this, like this has life and res zone, and this has, like, fast run walk and res. In general, that's kind of what you're looking for early in the game. Um, these might be a little bit better versions than you might actually be able to get, but it's pretty much the same idea. Um, just try to get your res up as much as possible, and you're good to go. And Cow King is pretty much invincible, as you might expect. So even though I do have Jab, it's not going to do much here. So I'm in player 7 Nightmare Cows right now. Once again, player 7 is the lowest no drop on the monsters, which means the cows are dropping items as much as possible. This is ideal. Uh, so if you're in a full party, it's really ideal to use this character, or of course if you are able to set it to player 7 in single player, using backslash player 7. So there's an ort ring right there. If you happen to start farming nightmare cows and you didn't want to bother farming lore and stuff like that, you can maybe put together some of your early rune words just by picking up some runes and nightmare cows. But once again, normal cows and nightmare counters will definitely help your progression through nightmare as well, so... That's not a bad idea. So this cow here has a lot of magic resistance, so that's going to be pretty tough to kill. Almost killed the cow king with just my uh, weak my weak insight mercenary. Remember, you don't need an F insight, but it does help him do a little bit more damage. So yeah, even with this build, nightmare cows. Are gonna drop and you're gonna be able to farm uh, early in the game and this is definitely like your best nightmare farming area to start progressing into hell so if your charms a little weak if you don't have all your bases if you don't have all your runes or if you just want to start farming in an area that can drop some nice juicy drops in general including like runes up through ist pretty easily uh, you can definitely hit that up i'm gonna say you might notice that i run out of uh charges on the spear pretty easily if you actually shop like multiple of these spears, kind of like with the multiple titans situation, you can actually uh, mitigate that problem as well. Another thing you can do, maybe to be a bit smarter, is with this level of gear, player 7 isn't as smooth as like player 7 hell cows with a fully loaded Javazon. Um, you might want to even lower the player count a little bit. Uh, player 7 is still perfectly fine, but... You might find it to be a little bit more efficient in Players 5. The difference between Players 5 and Players 7 no drop isn't huge. Uh, so reducing their HP a bit is pretty nice. Hey, what do you know? 
There was an item right there that's actually an upgrade for our starter Javazon. A Talrosh's Mask. That's actually amazing to find that. Um, it's definitely one of those items you can find farming Nightmare Cows if you feel like you're not ready for hell. Um, you could even use it on yourself if you wanted to for the Dual Leech. Uh, that's how effective it could be. But what I'd probably rather do is just stick it on the Mercenary instead of the Worm Skull. So now my Mercenary has all resistance and even more Life Leech. And more life. Which is going to improve its survivability. It's really hard to keep the Mercenary alive with crappy gear. Um, so having an item like a Talrosh's Mask is crazy. I, I think that's pretty nuts in a guide. I just randomly found the Talrosh's Mask. But you can see though, you can definitely upgrade your character a little bit as you go along. Let's go. <laughs> Sweet! Alright, so yeah, we have we have pretty junky gear, so I can swap here to my lower resist, and lower resist is actually going to help my damage a bit. But I'm not going to want to use it in Nightmare Cows, because I'm already doing so much damage with high density in here. I don't have to worry about that. So we're going to run out of Javelins again, which is why I recommend maybe buying a few of these from the vendors before you start doing this. And then you can just kind of repair them all at once. In general, high player account will be destroyed, even a nightmare with this cruddy gear. That is how strong Lightning Fury is. Um, it's not a joke at all. Uh, it's definitely challenging to find builds in LOD besides the Sorceress, maybe, that are really strong in the early game, but this is definitely one of them. So, GG. Alright, well, I think that's enough of that. I think you guys get the idea. Um... How it's going on there. I know cows. Cows are so awesome. I want to leave this. Uh, you can also generate more gold for yourself too by picking up items. Like cows are amazing for selling, making gold, uh, just finding like amazing bases, finding runes, crafting with gems so you can craft stuff if you don't have all of your gear crafted items can also work. And of course finding items like Talrosh's mask which is, uh, ended up being very useful there. So now the mercenary is a little bit stronger. Alright, so in Hell, you're definitely not going to want to most of the time be in player 7 because you're just trying to push through Hell. So now I'm going to kind of show you guys that this character can push through Hell, even with gear of this quality. Um, which is the main purpose of what we're about to do here in a second. So in Hell, your res are probably not even going to be that great, honestly. Um, this is because we have some items that are maybe a little bit above par, like this thing for instance. Uh, but eh, once you start, before you start pushing hell, make sure your res are at least around maybe the 40s if possible. Um, especially cold and light res. Fire res and poison res, just gonna uh, watch out for the damage and you might be fine. What's up White Haze, how you doing? But anyway, uh, let's show her off here in action. Oh yeah, that's right, it cannot do that. I'll just chuck these items. I don't actually need them. <laughs> Alright. Um, I can actually show off treachery a bit here if you guys want to see the attack speed on that. It's kind of cool. So, um, I think what would really illustrate this here? Maybe Nightmare Chaos, actually. Yeah, so this is a pretty tough area. I mean, Hell Chaos, sorry. Hell Chaos is a pretty tough area. Um, but you might notice a charge strike, we still eviscerate the monsters. It's pretty nutty how a charge strike that is only level 23 is able to do this to monsters in hell mode. It's not a joke. Once again, Javazon is good at all parts of the game. And even when you're just trying to get through the game normally, it's not bad. So I can use lower resistance here, and I can make it possible to kill them with charge strike if I wanted to. But they're so lightning resistant, I'm probably just going to want to skip them to be honest. One thing I can use here is a teleport staff if I want to make it go a little bit easier. I might actually end up getting the teleport staff here. It's something you can farm in normal from Act 3 Ormus before you're level 24. 
And a teleport charge is just like lower resist charges will allow you to use the skill teleport. It'll allow you to uh, swap and then teleport across chasms, which is kind of useful. So as you can see here though, ah oh, shoot, I can swap to my wand. And with lower resist, even this heavily lightened resistant enemy will go down. So yeah, we're in hell chaos right now. He's a... Uh... It's amazing what you can do with crap gear, isn't it? At least a little bit, right? Now if I swap to this, you can see... Now I'm attacking even faster. Treachery is really nice because uh, a treachery plus an attack speed weapon and plus an attack speed gloves, you can hit that 89 attack speed frame. So now I'm attacking even faster. Which is actually kind of nice. Now treachery is a little bit higher end than peace, so Lem you can't actually farm from Nightmare Countess. So you're actually going to find that from uh, Nightmare Forge or from Cows. So you're going to have to find that doing something else. You might have to cube up some foul runes from Nightmare Cows too, so it's going to be a little bit tougher for sure. Oops. So... Ah, shoot. Stop swapping to the... <laughs> wand. <laughs> yeah, so frustration sometimes, but that's okay. I am doing great. So, yeah, even with this cruddy gear, look how strong Lightning Fury is. Even with just, like, not even a thousand damage. I only have 800 damage Lightning Fury. Um, one thing you can do, though... Yeah, let's keep our mercenary alive. Use, uh, make sure to shift, uh, one, two, three, four, potion him if he starts dying. A mercenary with the smoke, though, you'll notice his res is maxed out. Now, I know that's partially because he's 95. But finding like a Tal's Mask actually does a lot of work plus this, so Tal's Mask is not even the greatest item in the world, but um, the, just some basic items. The Mercenary will stay alive at least somewhat in an area like Hell Chaos. Okay. Hey, what's up, Whiskey Bottle? How you doing? So, as you can see here, we can kill some Stormcasters um, with Charge Strike if I swap to Lower Resist, even though they're Lightning Immune. So Lower Resist works like Conviction. There's only two skills in the game that can break immunities. Lower Resist and Conviction. Which is why we have the Lower Resist wand. So we can still kill the monsters. We, we can skip them too, of course. You don't necessarily have to kill every monster, but... If you're one of those people that uh, doesn't feel safe or comfortable skipping the monsters, uh, this character is definitely fine. No! I'm gonna want to use Light and Fury for these monsters here. So yeah, you can see here, you know, we're definitely taking a lot of damage. Like, our gear is crap, but we're fine. And I don't even have max block or anything like that. It's okay. It might be a little bit more challenging when you have slightly less health, that's true. Okay, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a little challenging, of course, but you can even solo this stuff and get through the game with this level of gear. We're gonna try to kill Diablo, so we're gonna try to get up to Diablo, and then we'll uh, move on to a different variation of the character. That's kind of a nasty aura. See, the mercenary didn't end up surviving. Oh my gosh! Wow! <laughs> okay, well that's... That's not ideal at all. We're gonna go take some gold from my shared stash here. Let's pretend we farmed up the gold we were supposed to. Well, it's a good thing this isn't the hardcore variant. We're not really talking about hardcore yet, but to be fair, um, I was amped and they had might aura, so that's very dangerous, as you can see. Very, very dangerous. No, this is not hardcore right now. 
Um, we will be showing off my hardcore variant though on the hardcore care on on a hardcore character. And that's gonna be for late game though, just to show you kind of what you're working towards in hardcore. Um, I guess that just shows why uh, if you are playing hardcore, you can't really just run up to my aura enemies in hell at level 75. Uh, with amp and expect to live in some cases but that is some crazy damage uh, no matter what anyone says that's actually kind of nutty well that's a fun thing to have in a guide but you know that's kind of cool just shows that you know obviously um you can push through hell with this build but there are definitely some uh some struggles like if some of the monsters roll some very challenging stats like right there oh yeah i face checked it man straight up Okay. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Okay, so since I died, I have to rebind my lower resist charges. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, um, really nasty aura. They don't always spawn might, but. Yeah. You can also get some life leech on your uh, rings too early on. That would definitely help out a little bit. So yeah, we just killed the boss. That's all we had to do. Just kill uh, Mr. Grand Vizier. And Grand Vizier is the toughest one for this character because he's lightning immune, but with that lightning uh, lower resist wand, you can kill him. Uh, you don't always have to die every time. That's not a... That's a bug, not a feature. I can already tell that I'll be your best um, friend yeah. in this forsaken <laughs> cave. Hey, evil old man. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Cult of Xanadar Stay. Uh. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken cave. Alright, so... You get a decent amount of enemies. Lightning Fury is definitely your best friend to use it. Uh. So yeah, the reason why I'm showing off Hell Chaos is this is one of the toughest parts in the game. And the idea is to show you can make it past the Earth this gear, but it's going to be of course difficult. Um, it's practically like speedrunning level gear, so it definitely is pretty difficult to uh, traverse this area. But that being said, it's definitely possible. And, uh, you know, this level of gear, you'll see people die all the time sometimes here and there. Uh, you can't do that, obviously, in hardcore, though, so you're gonna have to play even more careful. In hardcore, you might even want to, like, have a Nader Helm on hand so that you can, when you see, like, Might Aura on Grand Vizier or something, you can pop a uh, Cloak of Shadows, which is an assassin ability. It's another ability that has charges, kind of like lower resist or teleport on a teleport staff. And you can, um,. You can use that one indeed as well, and you can uh, you can blind the enemies and you can prevent them from killing you. I'm not gonna demo the needers, but needers is also a very nice thing to have on hand. It's only nefter, so those are runes you can find from normal countess as well. So there's very very nice things you can do. You're a resident sleeper. Is it better than poison at this point in the game? Yes. Yes! I'll recommend that, bro, man, Dan. Except... No! So yeah, you can, you can still kill everything and you can move through it. Like I said, if you had a teleport staff on the swap and you kind of just like swap these out when you needed the lower res, you can do that as well. Um, I definitely recommend getting that teleport staff early on, but... We're just trying to like kill shit with this just to show how well it performs in general. Alright, there we go. Lower reds. So, charge strike against our single target buddy Lord DeSace. And Lightning Fury to kill everything else. If he's extra fast, once again, having a neater helm is definitely going to help because that can get you killed for sure. He's very dangerous. Recommend clearing out the density first with the Lightning Fury and then picking off the stragglers with the Charge Strike or just simply avoiding them by passing them up with Teleport or just moving past them. Ugh. So 
see. As you can see, we can kill everything in here if we really wanted to. Awesome. Right now I'm using Treachery, so my damage is a little lower. I'm surprised I haven't uh, faded yet from Treachery. That could actually help me out a lot with the damage reduction. I have no damage reduction on my gear, and you don't need it, but... You don't have any fancy items like Storm Shield or... Well... We do have, like, some... I guess, like, flat DR on the lore, but that's about it. Ugh... Of course, Enigma, yeah. Even Enigma has damage reduction. I don't got nothing! You don't find items in this stream. You're right. Restorama, evil old man. Thank you so much for the follows. Welcome to the Cold Xanander's Day. Hope you guys are enjoying the Javazon guide today. And we're... After we're done with the guide, we'll uh, continue playing the Javazon today. Just to uh, show her in all our glory and maybe try to find... Our long lost heroes might. Right. So starter variant, I know she's not as souped up as the other versions of the Javzon, so in some ways um, it might be a bit more boring, but this is important to show though. So I use my lower resist wand here. Kind of burn past them a bit. <laughs> Oh no. We ran out. Help! <laughs> so yeah, obviously you're not going to be farming uh, Hell Chaos yet with this level of gear. Uh, but you can get past the zone, that is the point. You can farm Nightmare Cows very easily as I showed, but uh, you're not going to be farming Hell Chaos yet like this. At least not super easily. It's going to take too long. Um, plain and simple. Plain and simple. My right, mercenary is dead. It's okay. We don't really need him. He's he's just cannon fodder. So if we just uh, left click over here and keep left clicking back and forth, can eventually kill them. And nice, we got him. Cool. Sweet. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. And that's all you need to do. Once you uh, can separate Infector or make sure you kill everything around him and you get Infector, you can kill him. So yeah, Chaos is one of the most difficult areas in Hell. If you can do this, you can do any of the areas. Um, you might have to uh, reset your game for spawns in areas like Worldstone, though. It might prove to be a little bit more challenging to, for instance, kill areas with Burning Souls, which are Lightning Immune. Even though you can break that immunity with a lower resist wand, uh, they do so much damage and they'll kill you, so there's always things to take into consideration, but it's possible to move past the whole game with this character. And if you sit in his minimum range, actually, he won't, he won't even be able to kill you. And if you have some quick work with the potions, even with 43 fire res, it'll be fine. Um, if you don't have resistances, you might just have to kite out with, like, Lightning Fury like this for a while, but overall, if you put lower res on him, you just start hitting with Lightning Fury, he's toast. Uh, I mean, sorry, not Lightning Fury, it's Charge Strike. Charge Strike is so insanely powerful. Even at only less than 2,000 damage, whether you're using the attack speed approach or using a bit more of the damage approach on peace with a bit of uh, base res if you don't fade with the uh, Treachery, um, you can destroy him with Charge Strike. Charge Strike, th that was Hell Diablo right there. Um, sure, it was only players one, but this got destroyed. And I, I have the, I have cruddy gear. I literally have just random, some of it is random crap. This is my best piece of my gear, honestly, so. <laughs> yeah, we don't have Titans or anything, so it's, it's important to note you don't need Titans. Some people feel like they absolutely need Titans before they start playing this character. You don't. Uh, you can farm Nightmare Cows, and you can get lots of really good items. You can't even move through the game without Titans. Titans is nice, though, because of the quantity. Um, once you get Titans, or if you decide to start farming like Nightmare Mephisto, or Nightmare Andy, or Cows for items like Titans, or Eldritch and Shank, which is another nice starting area. One thing I guess I should also show off is some other very strong starting areas for farming on her. Uh, she's not 
the best at boss farming because she teleports slowly with a teleport staff. Let's see if I can actually, uh... Yeah, there we go, teleport staff. So... Early in the game, you're going to have this staff as well, and the staff has teleport charges, which is what you would have on Enigma normally uh, in the end game. But the general idea here is to buy this uh, before level 24 in normal and just have it through your uh, the entire way. You can use it to farm bosses like Nightmare Andy, and of course you can also use it to... Um, just move around in general when you're trying to move through hell, like in chaos. I wasn't using it in there because it's being stubborn, but you know, one way or another, it's a lot better of a gameplay anyway. So this is also a very solid farm when you have cruddy gear. So uh, besides nightmare cows, I highly recommend farming these monsters here. And these and uh, Eldritch and Shank drop two items of magic quality or higher, or a gem. So it can roll a lot of rare items, so you can definitely get going a bit better for hell doing this as well. And if you have a teleport staff, you can just switch to teleport. And start moving around and firing lightning fury. Like so. And of course, if you have a boss to kill, you can uh, swap to putting these back on. Or you can at the very least, you don't even have to have this on, I mean... This helps with res when you're swapping for lower res, but you can just put on this. Let's say you want to farm like a worm skull or something, or I don't know, all the heal. You can also sit here and teleport over here and get to Nightmare Andy. Nightmare Andy can actually drop a lot of good items, including String of Ears. Uh, she she can even drop Stone of Jordan. But yeah, she definitely drops a lot of good stuff. Yeah, dude. All right, there it is. So when you're looking for Andy, you know, it's always uh, some kind of right-facing tile from the tile here, or east-facing tile. This tile's pointing this way, the uh, work tile. I'm Randy. It's going to be over here for Catacombs 3. Uh, there's no trick to finding Catacombs 4, though. In general, it's on one of the ends, though. So we're going to go looking for that. Just want to show you how she performs against bosses she is one of the slower boss killers though it's not one of my recommended farms for this character if you're starting out with her um i definitely recommend eldritch shank and cows a lot more because she makes use of the density and her single target damage and charge strike a bit more her lack of mobility and her super slow teleport from her teleport staff are not ideal that being said uh, if you want to farm up some uniques, or if you feel like you might be need even better gear. Always just pop in here. Put on your lower resist one that you farmed from Dragon. And then charge strike. That is how much damage she can do with that. Now if you did that in players 3 or 5, you have better chances of getting more items off of her. Uh, just like with regular monsters, like the random monsters, just the high density cows or whatever. A player count will affect the number of items you get off of a boss, so. Well, see, in this case, you got, oh, it's MF and fast run walk, okay. So that can help you farm some more Andy if you want to. Magic Find's really good against bosses for sure. Uh, so yeah. Cows in general are really good for runes, charms, gems, jewels, and jewelry, but bosses are better for those uniques and staple items. Eldritch and Shank are also good for those staple items and all around also for runes and whatnot so there you have it there is the starter variant of the jab zone definitely a lot to go over with the starter one uh, but the next few variants aren't going to be super hard to go over uh, we're actually going to go back onto our major our main high level jab zone now we're back to high level gameplay here uh, with the geared up souped up jab zone there's def she could definitely be even more souped up than this but we already talked about that. Mostly with lifer skillers that'd be really nice. Alright, so next up, I believe, is the 99 FCR MF variant. So when you're just farming alone, or if you increase the player count in the game, or if you're farming alone in a party, you really want to boost that magic find uh, 
to find as many items as possible and traverse areas like the pit to do so to find as many items as possible uh you're probably not going to want to focus super high on damage or super much on damage her damage is already absurd uh even in player seven uh even without skillers so skillers are kind of optional in a sense on this build i mean they're definitely good when you're trying to clear as fast as possible but when you want to balance magic finding clearing and being able to move quickly through areas it's definitely not fastest approach so this is the 99 faster cast rate uh, uh, magic find javazon approach instead of using some of the other gear you saw us here uh, used a second ago with high lords and whatnot and razor tail we're gonna drop our pierce percentage to at minimum like 82 which is what we currently have that's why I put some extra points in a pierce to start with so that I can show you guys this variant quickly. Um, it's actually going to be, I think, 83 because of back. Yeah, I think it's going to be 83, but somewhere between like 82 and 85 is fun. And um, a rack plus this amulet, so this ca this crafted amulet here. Um, this crafted amulet is really good. It has mana leech too, which is really nice and magic fine. So in a lot of ways, this amulet's actually kind of ideal, but there's definitely better ones you can get. You get 10 FCR there, you get 20 FCR there, and voila, we went from 68 or 70 FCR, which is what we had, to 100. At 99 FCR, the Javazon hits another teleport breakpoint. Might notice that we're actually teleporting at a pretty reasonable speed now. Even though she's the slowest teleporter in the game, she actually teleports pretty fast. That's good. Because... We're going to want to go elite pack snafing and density snafing and in general just moving through large areas like the pit and areas like the world stone keep this is very ideal it's also the ideal build for arcane sanctuary farming if you want to farm arcane on a javazon we will now show off all three of those areas in general just to show you how this build performs so let's see here um Yep, you do need those. Normally, you're just going to want to use MF small charms. Uh, like I said, don't pay too much attention to the exact numbers of the stats, but it's the same deal as the standard Javazon. Only enough dex and strength to wear the gear, the rest in the vitality. And the only real major difference in breakpoints is that faster cast rate breakpoint. In order to hit that, though, we do lose an attack speed breakpoint unless we switch to Thunderstrokes, but Thunderstrokes doesn't have as much quantity. I actually personally uh, prefer to just like lose one attack speed breakpoint and continue to use titans. Uh, you can of course use these, but we'll talk about this in a moment. I want to go over the boss killing variant, so I wouldn't worry too much about that one. So in general, uh, MF res charms are really good here, just filling out your res, filling out your MF. Stack all the MF you possibly can, you don't need the skillers for damage on this. Uh, you'd be surprised just how crazy her damage is, even without skillers, um, which is pretty much what we're going to show right now. Wait, player 7? Nope. So let's see. Um, 10, 3, 7. Okay, we'll also use some mana MF too, which is kind of nice. Helps out that teleporting and helps our mana sustain a little bit. And our fire is, is crap, but you know, you can definitely... You don't always have to use only MF charms, you can kind of round out your res, but in general the idea is to get your MF really high. Um, you might notice about this as well. Uh, you might notice as well here that the MF is insanely high on this build. In general it's a little challenging to actually get your MF higher on this version of the build. Um, but as good as you can do it, that's all that matters. Uh, the rest of the gear in general is the same. We still need that cannot be frozen and mana leech and FCR. We still definitely need all the FCR we can get, which is why we're stacking more FCR and why we took out Razor Tail. Because we took out Razor Tail, though, you got to put more points into Pierce. Get that Pierce once again. At least I would say, at least above 80, but um, if you can, like 85. That will require sacrificing some points at lower levels and synergies as well. All right, so first array is the same. Our gear is higher, faster cast rate. We don't have skillers anymore. We have a meth. Let's go. So we're still going to use our Phoenix for regen if we want. We don't have to, though. We can use Spirit, but it definitely helps the regen. 
More life and mana when we kill monsters. So now, you can definitely tell that our FCR is way faster now. So getting to the pitch is way faster. Um, if you guys know my channel, this is the variant I used in Battle of the Pit for the Java Zone. It's really good for this. Alright. And so as you can see, even with no skillers whatsoever, the Hell Pit is no match for her. Even in player 7. So even when there's 7 players in the game, you can just use Infinity, Enigma, all the FCR in the world. You can even lower your attack speed a bit. It doesn't have a huge impact on your DPS. This is how you, this is how you get the most out of your magic finding in areas like the Pit and Worldstone that drop all those items. Or for ghost killing in um, Arcane if you're trying to kill ghosts as fast as possible. Now, Arcane's really good for lightning builds because there's no lightning immunes. There's no natural lightning immunes, I should say. Just stick some items in my cube, and then I can go to Kane Ideum as well. I don't necessarily need um, tomes in my inventory. I can actually you Did you know you could even put scrolls in your belt? Well, you can. You can use them if you press the uh, corresponding number. That would be three. Did you know that? You can. And then, of course, you can just pick up some items, chuck them in the cube, do a run, and then ID them in Kane, and GG, you're good. And in single player, it's really convenient to get that player count up, which is where, really where the Javazon thrives in general, at least for density, um, just by typing that backslash player 7 once again. Alright, another good area to show off with this ability, I'd say, or really solid area, is Arcane. So Arcane's actually one of her strongest areas, but I'd only really recommend doing it with a 99 FCR Javazon, um, because you really need that fast speed. You don't need the damage so much, though. You might notice that I just chuck out one or two Lightning Furies and players of seven. It's done. Uh, one thing to note about Spectres is they have really high chances of dropping runes, charms, gems, jewelry, and... Uh, charms, jewelry, gems, jewels, yeah. Okay, anyway. Yes! All those things. So you might notice that this fast cast rate you can jump between the ghost packs. The ghosts are the main targets because they have such good loot tables for those kinds of items. Arcane can drop up to Cham and runes. Also, the super chests are also really good for dropping runes and can drop up to low rune. L-O. I don't know why that one's not dying. Oh. I had some light res. Okay. Only problem sometimes is that when you're teleporting so fast, the mercenary conviction from the infinity doesn't always apply to the monsters instantly. Once it applies, though... Busy mood. Summoner literally gets one shot, so that's actually kind of a fun thing to do as we're racing around the track here. And of course she also makes an excellent summoner farming farmer for that reason as well. Excellent indeed. But yeah, with teleport speed you can really farm a lot of things very quickly. Um, besides Bale and Worldstone, I guess I can also show off just, um, I think for Chaos I prefer the, uh, Razor Tail or at least, uh, T-Strokes for more negative enemy Light Riz. Um, but at the very least, um, uh, one, of course, of course you can easily destroy areas like this as we showed off earlier. Even with the weak version of this character. Uh, of course that was a nightmare, but still, even in Hell she can do it. Pretty easily. That dude was lightning immune. That's annoying. Okay. Um, another nice area, of course, you know, you can just pop into Drifter Cavern. It's a level 84 area, so. You can also drop any item in the game in there. Nice. I was not bowed. Make sure to watch your bow. Make sure you uh, use battle orders if it drops off of you.
We'll just pop into a Drifter Cavern as well, though. It's a 99 FCR. It's pretty easy with the teleport speed. Really straight ahead from the warp and uh, for the waypoint. Crystalline Passage. I am playing. Ele well, he knows that. He's, he's putting Kappa. He is putting a Kappa in the chat. He knows what's going on. He knows. So, Infinity breaks almost every lightning immunity, including these. It's really awesome when you have it. You can just kill everything. No problem. Okay. And of course, I can use Jab for some lightning immunity. It makes an, uh, she makes a really funny sound. <laughs> but she'll kill him nonetheless. Definitely sounds like she's trying really hard to parry her spear, but just not working. I did, Shiori. I did. So. <laughs> Kinda of sounds like something else, but whatever. All right. Anyway, um, editor is really nice. Uh, farming Nilla Fox nice on a 99 FCR version of this too, because you could dodge the snakes, and you can also get to Nilla Fox very quickly. It's three different configurations and halls of pain. You know where the uh, waypoint is. You know where all the Ma is. Dude, can I move? Yes, yes I can. Wow, um, so he has Conviction Aura and Light Immune that cannot be broken by an Affinity. Had very low resistances there, but that's okay. Uh, one thing to note about Nilifuck, you can always find him, of course, by checking for the paintings. Painting there, painting there, painting, no painting there. It's always where there's a painting and another painting perpendicular right beside one another. So Nilla Fox over here. And yeah. Uh, oh, he dropped an Alder's armor too. Sweet. So she shreds Nilla Fox most of the time. And even when Nilla Fox has like lightning immunity that can't be broken by a conviction, you can use Jab and you can still kill him very fast with Jab and the Mercenary. If you Tele Stump the Mercenary directly on top of a lightning immune, you can also maximize your DPS against the lightning immunes. Anyway, it's good stuff. And Nilifok gets shredded too. So Nilifok, E farming is pretty solid. With our 99 FCR build, besides teleporting for key farming, besides doing areas like Arcane in the pit, um, this is also one of the stronger areas with this build, which is Worldstone. You can just teleport quickly in between boss packs, with large amounts of density. Swap to Phoenix to regen. So once you get all this gear, it's really fun. Uh, Worldstone has a ton of density, so just like with Hell Cows, where 100% Pierce is probably even more important, so the standard variant of the job is on. Um, any area that just has high density in general is going to be great for your job is on, no matter what build you're using. But yeah, notice how we don't have a single skiller. We're not using skillers. We are in player seven, so it's high player count. And we have over 400 magic fund. This is a very effective build just in general. You're gonna find a lot of items at this build. And you're gonna find them fast. Let's see, ooh, where's the other one? Ooh, no. Ah, man. Can't pick it up. It's okay. Out of TPs. This is why... This is why some people just like having books, but then again, I think in general this saves more time. It also allows you to stick stack your inventory with more charms. So you can maximize an MF and res or life or whatever. Uh, with uh, that currently, but know that light is generally stronger. I did cover the starter a little bit, yeah. I covered the starter character that you kind of want, the gear you kind of want by like end of Nightmare to the beginning of Hell. 
Um, I did not do like a starter playthrough on this character, no. Uh, Prickalicious. Where can you get my sound pack? iTunes. Kick! Okay, here we go. Alright, so as you can see in general, she's just really, really agile. I love 99 FCR, it's just so agile. She has a ton of MF. She's perfectly built for just running between packs. Uh, yeah. yeah. Against those high HP targets, highly lightning res targets, or just isolated targets, um, Charge Strike is your best friend. Don't forget about it. Does so much damage. All right. Yeah, when you get those flares, like this character just is so good. There's so many nice bases you can find, um, like rumored bases in here. Just like in cows. Oops. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, traversing world stone, jumping between the packs, finding high density. This character's got it all. Even against these really dangerous death lords. Um, just throw out some lightning furies, maybe a couple of charge strikes, and they're done. Uh, even in player 7, once again. So, But that's once you get some pretty solid gear, right? Uh, you're not going to be doing player 7 if you have a partial build, or if you don't have infinity, for instance, so... Uh, it's definitely something to work towards still. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty crazy how strong this build gets, though, in the end. Alright, so now we're going to go show off another variant. There are two more variants we want to go over. We want to go over the boss killing variant. We want to go over the hardcore variant. So, hardcore is for hardcore mode, where if you die, you're dead forever. We'll go over those in a second here, though. You already saw a little bit of the boss killing variant earlier in this guide, though, when I killed D-Clone. I was wearing... My standard gear and then I swap to it. So for boss killing I'm kind of just going to remove the MF. I'm going to pretend my goal is to level for the most part. And the major areas you're going to want to use these against, um, this build against, is like Chaos where there's Diablo or Bale. Especially Bale I would say. Um, of course if you have multiple T-strokes you can swap them out when you run out of quantity. Um, that does definitely makes Chaos a bit more manageable. I'll show you how she does in Chaos too, and then of course we'll kill Bale and Diablo, the boss killing variant. And I already did um, the clone, and you saw just how fast he went down. In general, what makes her a boss killer is that she has more negative enemy light res. That's also good for areas like Chaos, to be fair. And... Um, just more damage in general, so she's definitely going to focus on, like, skillers. More damage, just damage in general. Lots and lots of damage. Maybe Geeds if you want it. You can even take off the Geeds if you want. And T-Gods is also nice because in one of the main areas we're going to be killing a boss, which is Bale! It's World Stone Keep, and there's a lot of souls in there too, so let's say you're like a... You know, your goal is to like basically level up off of Bale and not to die while teleporting to Bale and whatnot. Um, that can actually definitely help out a lot. Um, you can still use Razor Tail though. You can even swap out for a rack when you're actually killing the boss because um, Charge Strike, there's no skills to Charge Strike on here, but a rack actually um, gives you an extra skill there. So we're going to go chuck their rack in there just for good measure. Let me see if I can find it another T-Strokes. I think I have another T-Strokes somewhere. My shared stash on Pluggy. Um, if you don't know what this is, by the way, this is a mod. This is Pluggy, but it's still LOD. All the mechanics and everything in the game are the same as D2R and LOD. It's just a, just a stash where there's a... Uh, you can just put tons of items, infinite numbers of items, basically. So it's really nice when you're trying to search for all the gear in the game or do a grail and find every unique and set item. Or just you want to store stuff. You're just a hoarder, basically. Um, so yeah. Anyway. So there's another item that we had in our shared stash there. That is a 
another Thunderstroke. So, for this variant of the build, we are going to put on some more MF res charms again, because it doesn't really matter. Definitely want some MF, I think. Kill bosses, right? Could use life, though, it doesn't matter. Unless you uh, want to find more items. That definitely helps with those unique drops and sets for sure. All right, and yeah, okay. Um, uh, Lightning Fury pierces, yes. Um, that is how the ability functions. So having a high pierce on your on a, on your skill, uh, which you can usually just put one point into it and wear a razor tail, but if not razor tail. Uh, getting a lot of pierce as close to 100% as possible really makes Lightning Fury do a ton of damage. Uh, especially in situations where there's really high density. Uh, Lightning Fury will pass through as many enemies as possible right now with a uh, higher pierce. That's a good mechanics based question. I did, I, I did talk about it already, but you know, I will definitely be fielding questions from the chat as we continue to run through this guide here. So. The weakness of Thunderstroke um, is that it doesn't have stacked quantity, so it doesn't have 140 like Titans, and it doesn't self-repair. So on average, you're going to go through, I have, I'd say almost like two sets of Thunderstrokes, maybe even two and a quarter Thunderstrokes in the time that you go through one set of Titans. That's a disadvantage, which means you need to put more of them in your inventory or your cube or something, or you're just going to have to run to town and repair them a lot more often. That's why in, on most versions of the Javazon, I don't use this. Um, but when you're killing a boss, even more negative enemy res can reduce the monster's res even more into the enemy, t uh, the negative territory, especially if you have Infinity on top of that and Griffin's Eye. One thing to note here is this Griffin's is, of course, uh, the ideal version as well. We do have more attack speed. Oh, wait, I didn't... Gotta swap back to High Lord, sorry. Uh, yeah, we're back to... We're back to 70 cast rate, so our uh, teleport speed's dropped a little bit again. But we're actually back up to our 52 attack speed, which is nice for boss killing with charge strike. And now we have tons of negative enemy light res. Griffins, Thunderstrokes, and Infinity. The High Lords, and uh, uh, these gloves, and the T-strokes are now providing our attack speed. And on this version, you could even use a lightning faceted Griffins if you just want to purely max out your damage. Okay, so our res isn't very great, actually. Uh, probably could have chosen some better versions of these, actually. Uh, I, I can see kind of why that is, actually. I feel like for a fail teleporting, you want at least maximum light res. Let's try to reflect that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I think we can do better on the lightning res at the very least. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be really nice for surviving the souls at least. I know the rest of our res is crap, but let's just not take too much damage from that and it's fine. It'll be okay. The charms! Okay, so against Chaos, I actually like T-Strokes because there's a lot of lightning resistance and lightning immunes. Um, the Venom Lords are very lightning resistant and the Stormcasters lightning immune. Also, there's a ton of density, so this character definitely does very well in Chaos in the endgame. Um, that being said, I might still use Titans and then just use T-Strokes against Diablo, or I might just use T-Strokes and swap them out. We're teleporting a bit slower again, though. But with T-Strokes, you can see uh, Lightning Resistance isn't as big of a deal. Player uh, 7, we are shredding the monsters now. Well. So it's definitely helping us do more DPS in general. Definitely getting roasted by fire a bit. That's uh, understandable. You can really see the power of T-Strokes against um, Grand Vizier. You can also kind of see it against these Venom Lords here. Venom Lords have a lot of lightning resistance, and normally 
He'd still be pretty resistant, at least somewhat, um, even with Infinity on him. You now they pretty much have no resistance anymore. Might be down to like negative 80 or something. It can go down to negative 100, but yeah, as you can see here, you have T-strokes on you, that's no problem. Oh, wow. That is super unlucky. Um, yeah, so I have Hellfire Torch, so I'm going to use the Hellfire Torch uh, Firestorm to kill... Um, that doesn't happen very often, actually, so Grand Vizier every once in a great while can roll both Lightning Enchanted and Stone Skin. Um, and if he does, with his base Lightning Res, you can't break it with Infinity. And then the Stone Skin gives him physical immunity, too. Um, which makes it really hard to kill him. Normally you just want to skip monsters like that, but if you're in Chaos and you want to kill Diablo, you don't really have much of a choice. I'm um, just going to have to kill him with, like, Hellfire Torch, basically. Or hope someone else in your party can help you out with that. Also gotta remember I have Phoenix. Sometimes I forget I have Phoenix on swap. That's why we have Phoenix, it's so that sustain is not an issue as much. Okay. And we have another lightning immune, but this one this one is not uh, also stone skin, so not much of an issue there. All right, sweet. You could do that. Um, put one point. The only problem with that though is that um, it's not going to do a lot of damage without synergies like poison javelin. It's just not going to do much. You're better off just skipping them, really. Um, yeah, right here you can see that we run out of t ran out of uh, our T-stroke quantity. Now I forgot there I had another one in the queue, but yeah, I can just swap it out. Be good. Okay. So yeah, with T-strokes, damage is insane. Once again, this is player 7 chaos, so... Um, it's like there's a full game here, you can basically just run it with this kind of build here. Not much of a problem really, especially if you use Phoenix strategically. We use Phoenix right here and we just regen to full health and mana very easily. And so this is where the boss killing variant really shines. Um, if I swap out of the Thunder Gods and swap to a Mr. Arachnid's Mesh, now our damage is absurd. So, we're now looking at like almost 11k charge strike. And we also have maximum negative enemy light res. Now, let's see what this does to Diablo in player 7 if I get Mercenary on top of him. That's not players 1 Diablo, that's players 7 Diablo. Dead. Just toast. Um, this is uh, this is where this build really shines, to be honest. Um, it's one of the reasons why she's a nice... Uh, she can be pretty good sometimes uh, for setting Diablo, because when she actually gets to Diablo, it just pops him in the mouth. He's dead. Alright. Just set Diablo, kill the super uniques, and then pop Diablo. Easy. Uh, we're gonna put back the T gods on, because the T gods is more for teleporting through Worldstone anyway. I just had it on, because um, in general, it's pretty much what you're gonna want to use, at least for the bosses. I mean, not sorry, not the bosses, but like teleporting. Prevents uh, dying to burning souls specifically. Very good stuff. Or just other forms of lightning enchant. So let's see, let's repair our, let's repair our T-strokes a bit. So, if I'm just trying to level up, I'm just going to teleport straight to Bale with this tilt here. Let's see, I have, T, I have T gods on. I should actually get hit on purpose just to show you guys that when you have T gods on, you have 85 light res. They're actually not very dangerous anymore. We're, I'm mostly dying to the poison damage right now and to his magic damage thing. 
So that's a... Uh, was the benefit of T-Gods and World Stone, and that really goes for almost any build, so it's not a Javazon specific thing. But on a Javazon, you get um, Frida Lightning Fury as well on it, which makes it a lot better than a Rack, at least for this version of the build. Uh, because even as you're teleporting, you can also kill the monsters. You just want to make a pit stop here and there. Very nice, very nice. Ugh. It hurts! Wait, we have Phoenix though, right? Even if we don't though. We just lower the player count, you're not going to take as much damage. But she really shines in player 7. It is actually. How did you know? But anyway, teleport straight to Bale. You don't have to stop along the way. If you get stuck, you have FHR. Might have to pop some potions. We just found a rainbow facet and a unique ring, though. Oh. This is not even the magic find variant, so that's kind of impressive. We need to stack our whole inventory with uh, MF charms. How much MF is on this one? 259, eh, that's something. This will ID the facet in that when we're done here. Against Bale, if you really want to get like a little bit of extra damage, you can swap to Iraq because you use Charge Strike for Bale. And Iraq will provide an additional skill for that. Um, you don't have to though. You're only losing one skill, but that's why I have it in here, just to show you what you can do here. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to be sitting here and Destroying the waves with my T gods. My maximum negative enemy light res off T strokes and the facet and the griffins, and still using high lords for that attack speed. So, yeah. Did you know you can actually increase your teleport distance by having the character screen up? Okay. Oh, battle of orders is enough. So yeah, it, it, it's it's a cinch for her to kill bail waves. Lightning fury for the bail waves. They're heavily lightning resistance, maybe uh, resistant. You can pop them with a uh, charge strike. Not an issue when you have so much negative enemy light res. Um, I really like T-Strokes for Chaos, and I like it even more for Bale uh, and Bale Waves because you're not usually going to be using it so much where the quantity is as much of a factor, and you'll be able to make really a lot of use of that negative enemy light res and the attack speed on it. Alright, here we go. Uh, no, I'm gonna mainly play uh, multiplayer actually. So we're gonna have a lot of community stuff going on in hardcore demonic. <laughs> yeah, I like Tool. Tool's my uh, Tool's my favorite uh, music group. Sure, has been for a very long time. Recently came out with a new album, so it's really cool. Yeah, here you go. Uh, I will be doing, I might do some uh, single player things when the ladder dies down here and there, but it's not going to be a super high focus. I do a lot of variety content, so I just do everything, every build imaginable. I do a lot of hardcore, I do single player, I do multiplayer, so we kind of do it all on my stream. Uh, if you're just watching this on YouTube for the first time, or just watching uh, just in the chat for my first time today, so. Anyway. So yeah, against Bale, theoretically you can max out your damage with Charge Strike a little bit more with Rack, so I'll just do it the most optimal way. I'm going to switch to Charge Strike. And Bale in player 7. This is simulating almost a full party right now. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Bale has way higher HP than Diablo, and he still goes down that fast. Um, it is the strongest 
boss non uber killing ability in the game like period just sick period single target uh, nothing beats charge strikes so long as the monster is not heavily light and resistant or immune um that being said though, Ubers are actually challenging on this character because Ubers have such absurd amounts of region. Uh, if you use a lower resist wand on top of Infinity, on top of T-Strokes, on top of Griffins, you can actually kill the um, mini Ubers pretty well at Charge Strike. Uh, the problem comes against uh, mainly Mephisto, uh, Uber Mephisto, so when you're trying to get that torch, he has so much lightning resistance that um, you're not going to be doing anything, and he's going to regen too fast. You're going to have to switch to jab, and then you're going to have to stack, like, crushing blow on your gear to even make it happen. Uh, so it's kind of challenging to kill the final uber, specifically Mephisto, with the jab is on. Um, that being said, though, like, against D-Clone, against the, uh, other bosses in the game, uh, I mean, you even saw my level 75 Amazon kill, uh, Nightmare Andy in, like, three hits like that's how she is the entire game like she's really good at that uh, she's really good at clearing cows nightmare in hell eldritch shank and once you get this kind of level of gear you're going to be popping off in pit uh world stone chaos even arcane key farming you name it um just takes the right gear variant and you can always get it done so uh that is it for all the soft core gear variants um Hope you guys learned a lot uh, from watching all of those different ways to play the Javazon and soccer or whatnot, and the ways to gear her up, and what kind of changes in between the variants in general for like maximum efficiency and playability uh, for those different scenarios. All right, next up, of course, is our hardcore zone. So, yes, you know, in order to show off a hardcore zone, I do have uh, a hardcore real presence i guess you could say on my pluggy so i've also made tons of hardcore characters I've also done that as a total separate project from software so now without further ado let's go into the hardcore javazon so the hardcore javazon differs a little bit from the software javazon in some key ways in hardcore you're trying to make it to where you have stacked resistance you have as close to 50 percent dr as you can possibly get and you also want to just make sure in general you have a pretty good health pool and you have max block so you want dr max block stack resistances and a good health pool those things will present prevent you from dying in heart uh, she's level 95 so you know i've definitely played a lot of hardcore on her and she's doing pretty good in general but the general idea the mercenary is pretty much the same exact thing um, i don't have an f andes on my hardcore so it's just non f uh, still infinity you don't change anything you never change your mercenary ever in the end game uh, in the early game you can improve him constantly by getting more life leech res and dr and things like that on your mercenary while wearing insight until you get infinity um but it's always going to be the same mercenary no matter what so even on hardcore it's pretty much the same thing uh on hardcore still using that call to arms i'm not using phoenix though uh, because I don't want to swap and lose my block. That can be very dangerous. Um, instead, I mostly just sustain off of potions and mana leech and life leech off of titans. So I'm not going to swap to phoenix using this variation of it. You can still swap to phoenix. You just have to be very careful when you do that in hardcore. So that's definitely not something you can definitely still do that. The rest of the gear is pretty much exactly the same as every other version of the Javazon. Um, at least in this version, especially the standard version. The main, th the most important thing though about hardcore, at least in terms of how to gear your character, is the storm shield. So, once again, we want max block. So our chance to block is 75. You might notice on every other variation, the goal is to just get as much strength and dex to wear your gear. That's not the case on a hardcore Javazon. On a hardcore Javazon, um, we want to make sure we have uh, max block. Period. So in order to hit maximum block, you pump dex until we hit 75% block. And ideally we use storm shield, which also gives us a ton of damage reduction. That is a very key stat for surviving large amounts of physical damage, especially when under the influence of amplify damage. Um, of course, it also gives you a lot of res and you can put a burr rune in here even if you want to hit uh, 
50 DR with Enigma plus Storm Shield. But even without the Burr Rune, we're still at a pretty solid 43% damage reduction, which is pretty nice uh, with max block. Um, I actually prefer to get more damage, so I was pretty greedy with this hardcore build. I put a uh, Lightning Facet in there, and then I put a uh, Attack Speed Jewel in the Storm Shield so that I could hit uh, 55 attack speed with the Storm Shield while also getting more negative enemy light res. However, if you're a bit less greedy, you can put the attack speed jewel in the Griffins, just like on the normal version of the build, and then you can just put a Brew Rune in here, and then you can have over 50 DR. It can be even safer. Um, of course, uh, this is just another 220 gloves. Uh, believe it or not, my 220 gloves on hardcore is better than my best one on softcore. Uh, don't ask, at least in my opinion it is. Um, it has more mana, which is really good for sustain, and it has MF, so it's kind of cool. Um, 10 FCR, Mana Leech, MF Ring. Dex, Dex helps us get max blocks, so that saved us some points for life. That's a very nice ring. In general, it's still the same idea for the ring. You want that FCR still. Um, you want that Mana Leech, and you want that MF. Uh, one thing also to mention about the hardcore version of this character is we are still hitting that attack speed breakpoint at 52. But we're no longer hitting the 70 FCR breakpoint. We're actually only hitting 48. Now... That's because we're not wearing Spirit, so we don't have any FCR on our shield anymore, so it's a lot more challenging to get a ta uh, teleport speed with a hardcore Zon. Um, as you can see, my, my teleport speed isn't horrible, but you can definitely see how it's kind of sluggish compared to 60 or even 99 FCR. Um, we actually forego, we actually forewent, um, Razor Tail just to get even more FCR on the build. Uh, just so that we'd have enough to barely hit um, 48 with these three gear pieces right here. Uh, which meant that, which means we put some extra points into Pierce. Which you can see here, we put four points into Pierce. We have no Razor Tail. We're sitting 82% Pierce, we're still hitting a pretty good FCR breakpoint. But now we're a lot tankier. We have a ton of DR, we have maximum block, and we have a lot. Res. Honestly, our resistances aren't as stacked as I'd like them to be. Uh, poison res isn't super important, but at least making sure res is max is very important in hardcore. Uh, we are in hell mode with max res. Definitely make sure fire, cold, and light res are maxed, especially if you're just teleporting around. Um, if uh, At least when you can. Um, before, the, before this point, before you have this level of gear, you're probably going to want to... Um, at least make sure most of them are max, or at least somewhere north of 50, uh, and you're going to want to play back. But once you get this level of gear and you can teleport in the middle of mobs, you want that max block, you want that super high stacked res. Uh, as high as possible, even above 175, so Conviction doesn't instantly kill you. Uh, conviction will only drop me to like 30, uh, 30... 34 light res, maybe 39 light res, 40-ish for cold and light, so I'm not going to die instantly. A fire res is a bit of a problem, though, because if I do get hit by conviction there, I could die insanely fast. So I got to watch that. Um, just make sure I don't teleport in the middle of Infector, right? And, uh, be good. But overall, you're going to put a lot more emphasis in hardcore on life and res. So you might notice that on none of the other variants was I wearing life res charms. I'm actually wearing a lot of life res charms. Hitting above 3,000 HP with max block and 8,000 defense. I'm even using a defiance mercenary. Um, defiance is nice because Enigma plus Storm Shield gives you so much defense. Uh, you can even you can actually gain even more defense. One thing I mentioned earlier though is Holy Freeze is also good for safety. Um, because it'll slow down the monster's attack frames. So, or, and movement speed at the same time. So in Hardcore, I wouldn't use the Might version at all. Like, I wouldn't even make that an option. Uh, Nightmare uh, Offensive. I'd rather do Nightmare Defensive or Normal Defensive. Normal Defensive, of course, being the Defiance Aura. So... Either one of those, of course, is going to be better, I'd say, in Hardcore, Defiance, or Holy Freeze. Reason Defiance because, well, it's pretty sick, gives you a lot of defense, which means things aren't going to hit us very often. And uh, you still make sure you have at least one source of Life Leech and Mana Leech. 
And I still have some skillers. Yeah, make sure to fill out your res. So if you're having res issues, don't be afraid to just put more res in here in Hardcore. Uh, yeah, I actually self-found a perfect Amazon torch on my Hardcore. And uh, yeah, we, we have some really sick gear on her for sure. But um, can always be better though. I mean, there's always stuff you can get better. You can have better rings. Can have uh, better charms. In general, though, damage isn't super high on the priority list, though. We also have a T-Gods in our cube here for encountering souls, because souls are still insanely dangerous um, with just 75 light res. So we're going to want to make sure we have some source of lightning sword when we go into Worldstone. So without further ado, I'm actually going to show her off in the three areas that she's really strong with in general in the game to show how to play hardcore variant a bit and then well it will be done pretty much uh, by the way the rest of the skills are the same on her you just put some more points into pierce one thing you can also do on a hardcore javazon is you can put points into dodge if you want but for that i wouldn't be teleporting around because you can get dodge locked um and Diablo 2 dodge lock is when you put points into dodge on an Amazon and then you dodge so you don't take damage from the attack but you go into an animation that keeps you stuck in place. I don't actually like dodges at all which is why I also don't get Valkyrie. You might have noticed that on my softcore versions of the build. On the hardcore version of the build you could do this and it would definitely prevent damage in a lot of cases but it could get you stuck. Totally stuck, unable to move. And that's very dangerous in hardcore, especially if you're being hit by lots of enemies. Um, it pretty much forces you to save and exit at that point, and you better hope you're fast enough because um, sometimes you just get stuck there, totally unable to pot or do anything, and you just die. Sometimes you can try to pot and it doesn't work, so it's, it's dangerous stuff. Uh, you do have to get dodges if you want a Valkyrie. Valkyrie is a nice tank. Um, but like I said, you actually have to get the dodges to get the Valkyrie, so I'm not a fan. I'd rather just, you know, have the fundamentals for hardcore. Your block, your damage, your stacked res. You don't need to stack res as much for the pit, for instance, because the pit doesn't have as much elemental damage. So it just depends on where you're farming. If you're farming a lot of chaos, definitely stack the fire res, for instance, and if you're farming a lot of worldstone keep, maybe more uh, cold and lightning res. But at any rate, that's good stuff. So with only one FCR frame lower, and still a strong amount of lightning pierce, he's very tanky. You can see here, we can kind of just sit here in hardcore, the enemies can hit me. You saw how my other Amazon was taking a lot of damage all the time. Um, honestly, even, you could even prefer the hardcore version of this build for softcore if you really hate the fact that she takes damage all the time and it's dangerous. Especially teleporting the spirit into mobs to no block um, when she has such slow teleport. Um, as you can see, though, with 8,000 defense and max block, she is really tanky. We're also going to play her in player 7 just to show with higher monster damage and monster density just how strong she is in general. Um, this is what you want in hardcore for sure. Especially against mobs like this. So, see this? this you know, these archers are dangerous. Um, but honestly not very dangerous for this version of the build. And that's ideal. You're not going to want to do any kind of dying whatsoever on this character. Or you're going to lose it forever. This is how it's saying though. What's up, Koyster? How you doing? Wow, that's, uh, that's really BM, actually. That's, uh... That's really trolly. Not gonna lie, uh. But sir, wow. So I'm just gonna kinda let them try to kill me here. And I'm not amped, so you can see at 43% DR or even more DR, you can just see how tanky we are. I can just kinda take damage for a very long time. Okay. You're not going to want to do any kind of tele-swap nonsense. There are some other builds where you can um, 
Like maybe on software, you could even use Storm Shield on your main hand, and you can use Spirit on your off hand, and so you can teleport on your off hand and then switch to your main hand so you don't take damage on Storm Shield. But you're never going to want to do that in hardcore. You're never going to want to teleport with a lower than max block or without your DR. It's going to be very dangerous. Um, you can definitely always play hardcore with the softcore versions of the Jabazon. It's all about your risk tolerance. That's one the disclaimer I should put here. Um, it's just that character might have a a shorter lifespan overall. And uh, there's definitely a lot more risk involved in doing that, so be very careful if you wanted to do that. See, so, yeah, I don't have any Valkyrie, I don't have any dodges, it's okay, right? It's okay. And even without skillers for the most part, except for one skiller, we could have more skillers if we had better res charms, right? But even without more skillers, even with just nearly 3,000 Lightning Fury, she's still doing insane amounts of damage. We don't even have maximum pierce, but the pierce is helping a lot, so make sure to at least get a decent amount. Also using Titans. So yeah. This is player 7 chaos, so yeah, even on hardcore we can still destroy the game uh, with the right gear set up. And we can do it without too much risk of dying, but you know, there's always a little bit of a risk. Alright, popped him with some lightning sword strike there. Very nice stuff in general. Right? So as you can see, uh, even with my aura, they're not really all that dangerous anymore. We're definitely losing health here and there, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh, Drax, nice. Very good, very good. Oh yeah, I should ID that um, the facet there. Yeah, so we just found Drax. This hardcore version of the Zon, she also has, yeah, 280 MF, so it's not like she doesn't have magic find too. Um, if you're stacking res MF charms, obviously that's ideal, but otherwise, focus on your life and res first before you start worrying about MF. Barb Nation, there you go, there's a Drax. He's in Drax. That's pretty cool, that's a pretty rare item. Wait, is that? Why do they have my aura? Oh, interesting. Got an aura that, he got a my aura that overrode his uh, fanaticism. Alright, so as you can see, it can be a bit frustrating sometimes, especially on a higher player account to kill a jab. But jab can still get the job done, as long as you teleport on top of the monster with your mercenary as well. And... Oh! Let's go. Get him! Alright, so yeah. Pretty safe stuff, right? Safe and high damage. And of course, if you don't have more res on your charms, you can put up boots with res, like Alders as well. There's definitely a lot of things you can do. Um, just depends on like where your res is. Just make sure you stack your res and DR in general. Do it, man. Do it. Um, when is the LOD reset? I'm, pro I'm going to be playing um, P2, however, maybe just killing Hell Bale, we could do that on the LOD reset. I wouldn't mind doing that, Dirty Bargs. Not going to, like, play the reset, like, extended, though. I mean, it's still... 
The unfortunate reality is that normal Battle.net is still botnet, so it's not going to be that exciting to like play for an extended period of time. Alright, so this is actually a good teachable moment here. I should switch to my Thunder Gods, which will help against the bats and, um, and the souls. So since we're against souls, we have now 85 light res and lightning flat lightning sword. So it's going to be very good. Um, if you see souls in here, definitely switch to a T gods and hardcore. Um, I would say on softcore, there's definitely a little bit optional, but um, I wouldn't mess around with it in hardcore. Definitely testing the game if you do that. One thing I guess I could demo real quick here is that you don't necessarily need F Titans, but it helps. Yeah, sometimes there could be like a billion souls, and you can just jump into a room. And you think you have enough health, and you, your light res is at least decent, and you're okay, and then you die. Souls still do a billion damage, even with that crazy res, so... It's tough stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's... The way it is, in general. Go, go, go! The Titans are quit the game, wow. Hardcore. Very hardcore, man. So these are actually an example of a regular monster that's uh, lightning immune, even with infinity, and it's one of the only ones. So, I wouldn't worry about them too much. If you want to kill one of the elites, you can pop them with Jab and the Mercenary if you want, but for the most part, you can just ignore them. Yeah, this is player 7 Worldstone. Very dangerous for the most part, but... As you can see with the right gear, we're really not taking all that much damage most of the time. We're slowly dying here and there. The T Gods also is very good against the Lightning Mages because those do a ton of damage, so. It's a mistake to underestimate them for sure. Oh, yeah, experience, nice. Okay. There's no way to know where uh, Mr. Bale is necessarily. Jab is a little bit better with Death Titans for sure, but that monster was stone skin anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered much. Physical res will definitely make that tougher. And I definitely recommend just skipping them most of the time. Okay. We have dolls in here. Oh, we do. You do! Oh goodness. Even with max block and DR, because I was amped, that's still very dangerous. And remember, the dolls instantly explode in LOD, guys. It's not like other mods. One in particular. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Be very careful. So, one thing that can definitely get complacent with, even on a hardcore zone, is dolls. You might think, oh, well, I have max blocks so and nothing's gonna kill me. If you jump into a pack of like 20 of those and you have amp, your max block's not gonna save you. They will kill you very fast and you can just instantly pop yourself. But yeah, that's always fun. There's other things you can do, by the way, to make this character safer for hardcore. Um, yeah, you can just take off the T-Gods, and so there's no more risk of souls if you want. But, you can also put on a Dungos. You can use Chains of Honor if you're worried about stacking res. You can even use a Crown of Ages with lightning facets in it. Um, you could totally nuke your FCR doing that, though, so you might not even want to teleport at that point. The teleporting is so good for Merc positioning and getting 
from point A to point B and uh, killing elites and bosses in general. Which is why if you can, try to use Enigma, but if you're not at that point, um, you can definitely, uh, definitely use a, uh, a short option. Option, uh, intermediary option, I guess I could say, until you get Enigma. Um, Storm Shield's like the best there is, though, period, though. I mean, before this, you can still use Rhyme to hit max block, but you need to find damage reduction, so... You could also, like, use Shaft Stop to help out with that. Any of those, like, damage reduction items. I mean, even V-Gaze wouldn't be horrible, but V-Gaze doesn't have any damage on it, no skills. And, of course, uh, like I said, you can just stack some more res charms and whatnot. We should show off decoying and be able to stop Decrep. I don't have decoy, actually. Um, but you can do some interesting tricks, yeah, for sure. Um, I decided to focus on getting more Pierce on this build because we are... Um, we don't have Razor Tail, so that's a bit of an issue there. This is the hardcore Javazon, so, you know. This is the, this is the generic hardcore... Javazon, I would say. This is the generic build you should be aiming for. This is P7 build again, Bale again, so even on Hardcore, we're still destroying Bale, even though we've lost a little bit of damage. And right now, I'm not even using T-Stroke, so... It's not too bad, right? So... The Defiance or a Mercenary, or a Holy Freeze Mercenary, are gonna be a lot safer. I don't know, did we... Uh, did we is there something we didn't go over for Hardcore? We talked about how you could go dodges in Valkyrie, but then I wouldn't jump into middles of packs so you don't get stuck and get locked into that animation. Not a good idea. Talked about how you could do that, though. And in general, how you just want to make sure you put more points in the Pierce because you don't have Razor Tail and you want... Yeah, the key really is Storm Shield, though. Like, Storm Shield's, like... Like, in the late game is, like... It's bread and butter of hardcore in general. There are some hardcore builds that might not necessarily have to use Storm Shield. You could use like Homunculus and Crown of Ages and Dungos or something on some builds, but man, uh, for this build especially, it really um, opens up all your FCR and damage options and everything else. So it's really uh, it's really important, I think. But anyway, that is it for the hardcore variant, and uh, I think. Uh, I think that is it for the uh, the Javazon guide as well. Chat, do you have any questions for us uh, as we conclude this Javazon guide? Hope you guys learned, you guys and everyone else learned something today about the Javazon in general. There's different setups for uh, different kinds of ways of playing her. And uh, all those optimal areas she's good at farming at. We specifically didn't really farm the areas that she's not good at farming. Uh, so take note of those areas as well. Uh, it should be on there fairly soon, fairly soon. But yeah. So, uh, I hope you guys, of course, learned as much as you possibly can, though, about this awesome build for sure, though. Do we have any other questions? Anyone from the chat have any questions, or did I pretty much answer everything? I did talk about Phoenix, yes, and how you can use it on swap to regain your health and mana. I demoed it as well. On the, uh... On the softcore version. I'm not using it on the hardcore version because I'm going to prioritize just having more health and more mana. Uh, a couple of extra skills for health and mana are actually really important on hardcore. One thing to note is that I lose like... So I only have 2900 health. If I put on this, this, the spirit, um, I gain almost a hundred whole health just from having two more skills. That's pretty big. Um, this could be big differences when you're about to die or when you super close. Um, even the hardcore version isn't invincible, so uh, you can definitely see an LOD, especially in higher player account, however, it's pretty easy to die. I mean, generally, you want to play this character in high player account, but um, especially once you get an affinity and you, once you really get going. But yeah, it, it's a pretty big deal. On softcore though, yeah, we definitely used Infinity on all of the variants. I mean, sorry, uh, Phoenix, because Phoenix is really nice. It's ideal, I think. Uh, you can also use Spirit, though. I explained that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of ways to build the character. You know, if you're trying to kill bosses or you're concerned about D-clone, 
but you just want to kill Bale as fast as possible to get to 99. That uh, boss killing variant is very, very important. This hardcore one that we just played just now is how you play hardcore uh, to prevent dying as much as possible. Uh, the 99 FCR one in general for just magic finding and player 7 or even lower player count, just really good at magic finding, really good at mobility. So it could be nice for teleporting Bale as well. And then the starter variant, we just kind of showed off where you want to start from and how to farm Nightmare Cows. And <laughs> the, uh, the playthrough for Chaos is a little janky. We even died once, but <laughs> at least we kind of... Um, we, we showed that you can clear Chaos, though, and you can kill it even without very good gear uh, in Hell. And, uh, of course, we showed that you can even farm Nightmare Cows once you get to that gear point very well, even in higher player counts. And we showed off the standard version that is kind of the jack of all trades. It could do everything, um, but it's specifically specialized in cows because it has 100% pierce and it has that razor tail for that. So it really hits that high density really hard. And in an area like cows, there's not too much uh, lightning resistance or anything. So it's just uh, easy to kill monsters for the most part and really good drop tables. Yeah, overall, those are all solid areas and everything else. And... I think that's it. Um, J mod, oh yeah. So if you if you happen to get lucky or you're extremely rich, you can buy a jeweler's monarch of deflecting. So it's a a blue monarch, a magic monarch with four sockets and the deflecting mod, which is the uh, block and block speed mod, which is on storm shield. It's only thirty twenty on that one, but instead of thirty five twenty five block rate and chance of blocking. Um, but it's a blue monarch with that blocking mod and four sockets. You can get max block with it, and you can just stuff it chock full of uh, lightning facets, like the one in this uh, griffins here. And you can just uh, have even crazier enemy lightning res and even more damage. Uh, it's not very safe, so I don't know about doing that on hardcore, because you don't have DR, but if you do it on software, you can even get max block with it, and you get a ton of damage. You have to find your res. Your res is going to be even worse if you do that, but you could definitely use one. It's insanely rare though, and it's insanely expensive. Uh, but yeah, um, all those all those options definitely exist. I think we kind of went over most of the gear options, but there's definitely more gear options depending on uh, if your res is kind of low or your MF is kind of low. Hardcore if your DR is low. Definitely make sure to shore up all those stats. Well, anyway. I think that's it for the question and answer section. Uh, thank you guys for that input and some of those questions there at the end. Uh, you can check out this guide in my LOD guide section or just my guide section in general on my YouTube. Of course, you can also check out my Project Diablo 2 guides, of which I have a whole bunch of as well. Hope you guys learn more about this insane S tier, strongest Amazon in LOD, guys. GG. Dark humility. Over and out. See you guys next time.